Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. Here in stormy Durham, North Carolina, inside of O'Kelly Riddick Stadium, North Carolina Central Eagles getting set to host the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats in a critical MEAC showdown. Well, Bethune-Cookman coming in at 3-1, and one, led by first-year head coach Terry Sims. A real opportunity this season once again in Daytona Beach, Jim. The, the conference games are so much more magnified considering what happened last year. Five teams tied for first place, including Bethune-Cookman and North Carolina Central. An opportunity to get the upper hand on a team that's one of the premier teams in the conference of North Carolina Central here today. Head coach Jerry Mack brings North Carolina Central in, a program now that has expectations. For so many years, they were just medium of the pack, average pack. Now, the Centrals think they can win a championship. Big opportunity to prove it against a team they haven't beaten in quite a while here today. Eagles coming in at one and two with Jay Walker, former NFL and Howard quarterback. I am Roy Philpott. Delighted that you have joined us on a rain-soaked afternoon here in the Deep South. NCCU won the opening coin toss and deferred to the second half. So it'll be Bethune Cookman receiving the football first. An opportunity for the Eagles to really make a statement. Last year they played their best football at the end of the year. Bethune Cookman beat them pretty handedly last season. This year they're trying to prove they're much improved and more importantly, I think, that they don't fear Bethune Cookman football as they had in previous years. Straight and back deep to receive for the Wildcats. We have one of the top offenses in the MEAC to start this season. Underway in Durham with a squid kick and fielded at the 32-yard line by one of the upbacks and down right there. So our first look at Quentin Williams, one of two quarterbacks we should see this afternoon for Bethune-Cookman. Has put up good numbers, the more experienced signal caller, Jay, and they feel like they can call just about anything with him on the field. And to be quite honest, he's the better passer of the two. He does better in the passing game. The backup, Larry Brim, a little bit more explosive running the football. But I think it's important for Williams to get out to an early start. Right now, weather is not an issue. You're dealing with the wind. But if you can get some points on the board early, that may pay off down the road. Yeah, weather certainly will impact today's ball game. The wind's blowing out of the north-northeast at over 15 miles an hour. And Williams out of the shotgun, the deep handoff to Jordan. That's Anthony Jordan, who's been granted an extra year of eligibility. The nice pickup on first down, the stop by Devonta Reynolds. And Anthony Jordan's a specimen. If you're going to beat Bethune-Cookman, it all starts with stopping their running game. If they can run the ball on every single down between Jordan and Williams, they will. You must figure out a way to take away the run and force them to throw the ball. Gain of six yards on first down. They'll fake the handoff this time, and the screen pass is incomplete. So he bounced it out to his wide receiver. It'll bring up third down. A little surprising to see them go with the pass play after picking up six and a half yards on the first down run with Anthony Jordan. You'd think they would try to control the line of scrimmage early and establish control picking up the first down on the ground. Rayshon Nelson, the intended target, third down, and a big play coming up for the Wildcats. On the zone read, Williams, the keeper, brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Theo Livingston comes up from his safety spot, Jay, and a big stop right there. One thing that North Carolina Central will do, they will sell out to stop the run. They will put more bodies than you have. You'll see the down man go with the fake run and a great job making a tackle in open space by Livingston getting off of his block or making that tackle for a loss forcing Bethune Cookman to punt the football third tackle behind the line this season for the redshirt senior Theo Livingston and the punt team on the field for the Wildcats contact on the punt and a late flag as Francis was bothered punt will be down at the one yard line so a 63-yard punt will check the Bring penalty. The drive likely continues. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're Bethune-Cookman, it's going to be a running into the five. punter. Roughing the kicker. On the return team, number 35. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Alden McClellan, the guilty party. Well, they went with the 15-yard variety on this penalty. You'll see the rugby-style kick coming from your right side of the screen. It's actually, the leg is extended. Didn't hit him, but the extended leg... They call it the personal foul for 15 yards. Good acting by the punter. 
And now Bethune Cookman gets to hold on to the football. That was Jonathan Cagle in to punt that one out of there. And so the drive continues after the penalty. It'll be first and ten, and the Wildcats suddenly in NCCU territory. Jordan, a stutter step. Off to the races, far side. There he goes, and finally shoved out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Another first down for the Wildcats. A tackle made by Tony Tate. And look at the strength of Anthony Jordan. You talk to the coaches, they say he could be a starting linebacker for us right now. Great vision, plenty of experience, and taking on an undersized defensive line from North Carolina Central. Look for Jordan to pound the football and have a big day. Gain of 14 yards on the play, this time looking towards the end zone, and it's going to be picked off. Inside the five and bringing it in is C.J. Moore. Redshirt senior from right up the road in Riley and a big play for the Eagles defense. I mean, you're establishing you can run the football. You try to throw it, just a poor decision on throwing the football as well as the location of the football through to the inside. And C.J. Moore, one of the guys that we said has to be a great run stopper and pass coverage has to be great today. Shows you what a fantastic story he is. Former walk-on from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, making a big play for his team. Yeah, one of the leaders for Jerry Mack's club. He was seen midfield an hour before kickoff. An impassioned speech for his teammates. Very energetic and a big play in a critical situation. So the Eagles take over deep in their own territory. And on first down, Malcolm Bell's pass is out of bounds. Miscommunication there with his wide receiver. And Malcolm Bell's going to have to play well. They're He's not locked in or entrenched as a starting quarterback for North Carolina Central. Last week versus Florida International, he was benched in favor of Quinn Billerman. But he has the tools. He has a stronger arm. He has more ability. But his accuracy is a key. He must become more accurate throwing the football. Hand off to Augustus. Near side gain. He'll pick up three on the play. It'll bring up third down and long. The tackle made by Trenton Bridges. And when you think of North Carolina Central football, make no doubt about it. Coach Mack is an offensive coordinator. That's a head coach. I like to say he's masquerading as a head coach. He wants to throw the football. It doesn't matter if it's windy, what the elements are. This is an offense predicated on pass first, run second. Third down and a long six. The wind continues to blow here in Durham. First possession of the game for the Eagles. This has been an area that North Carolina Central struggled in this year, but a nice move by Bell all the way up to the 20-yard line, finally brought down by Borgella, but a gain of 13 yards and a first down, Jay. It was a great move because he made a quick decision. Watch how quickly. 1,001, I'm taking off. Makes a good decision, finds a running lane, able to escape and pick up the first down. And that's what Malcolm Bell brings to the table that you don't get from the backup, Quinn Billerman. They'll go up tempo, deep hand off Augustus, close to first down yardage, and in fact, they'll give it to him after a gain of 11. Idrius Augustus off to a fast start. One of their signature run plays with the trap with the pulling guard, they bring Carl Jones around number 55 to serve as a lead. One thing you won't see from this offense, they don't really run downhill. They always like to do zone blocking, attacking the perimeter. Very rarely do they run in between the two guards. Miak opener for the Eagles. Pass is finally brought in after the bobble by the tight end Nathan Scruggs. And tackled right there by Borgella. And again, North Carolina Central will go with tempo. Andreas Augustus. Gang tackle close to the 40 yard line. It'll be short of first down yardage. Borgella again with a stop. When you know you've got a team that likes to run outside the tackles, it's imperative that the wide receivers maintain their blocks on the outside. On that previous play, it's a great job of running by Augustus, but the wide receiver missed the block on the outside, minimizing the game. Third down and three out of the shotgun. Bell with time down the field in traffic and incomplete. Looking for Brandon Galloway was double covered. Tyree Simmons helped poke that one away. Went the wrong place with the football. Had the tight end open in the flat for maybe a two-yard gain. Possibly could have made the catch and picked up the extra yards. 
but he locked in on Galloway. The safety saw it and made a good break on the ball. North Carolina Central very fortunate that ball was not intercepted. Frank Brown back deep to receive this tilkey punt. He's going into the wind, gusting at around 20 miles an hour just before kickoff. And Tilkey with time turns it over right into the teeth of that win. And down to the 26 yard line. A punt of 36 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats when we come back. There comes a moment in life. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's and in part by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back in Durham on a stormy Saturday afternoon. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott here with you. Second possession of the contest for Bethune Cookman. And chance maybe to take a closer look at Jawill Davis, who's been red hot to start this season, Jay. Yeah, the difference between Bethune Cookman a season ago is the speed they have a wide receiver. They feel like they have four of the fastest guys on the field at all time when they go with their 10 personnel. Jawill Davis is one of them. He's a home run hitter that can be a difference maker in this football game. Out of the pistol formation, Anthony Jordan straight ahead. Nothing doing, a short pickup. And it'll be interesting. I think the the game plan when you looked at it, one thing North Carolina Central does a lot of when you watch them on film, they play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. Probably too much for, for my taste, for my comfort level, but with the wind and the elements, that helps a team that can be aggressive. So I think you'll see Central play even more man-to-man -man so they can keep an extra guy in the box to stop Anthony Jordan from running the football. On second down and nine. The big hit behind the line. Thompson forced the fumble. The Eagles say that they have it, but our officiating crew indicates the ball. They're clearly going to have to take a look at this. That was close. It was a bang-bang play, Jay. And, and it was clear a clear case where the hit made the ball come loose. Did Williams hold on with the recovery? And Bethune Cookman's trying to get to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball quickly. And watch Thompson. Shot out of a cannon. Yeah. And, and, and you see that angle. It was a great blitz pickup by Anthony Jordan going from right to left across formation. But Quinn Williams just did not see Jeremy Thompson on his blitz from his inside linebacker position. And they'll take another look at this one. Tell me what as, you see here, Jay. There's he, Thompson. Yeah, as he steps up, that. It's a good call on the field, I think. If he was holding the ball, it was almost as if the ball was pinned between Thompson and Williams going to the ground. One more look. I think as he's going to the ground, that ball is moving. Well, remember, it has to be indisputable video evidence. Is that enough to overturn the call in the field? Probably not. Probably not in that case, but I think had Thompson not landed on the quarterback, the ball would have come out a little bit sooner on its own. Now, just underway here in Durham, of course, a lot of people here Along the eastern seaboard and the southeast in general, worried about the weather today. There have been all sorts of movement with kickoff times. Michigan and Maryland changed things up. Look at the marching Wildcats who made the trip up from Daytona Beach. In the elements. Yeah. In the elements. Talking to athletic director Lynn Thompson, he said they have outdoor gear. They have rain gear. We're prepared for this one. And one thing that Bethune Cookman does is for conference play, they think the band really gives them a spark. They utilize their band. They will travel the marching Wildcats all over the conference. Marcus Woods with a call After here. After the ruling on the fifth stands, the clock will start on my signal. The third down and 13 coming up after the big time sack and hit by Jeremy Thompson. And that could be a tone setter. You see that kind of play by the Eagles defense. What I mentioned before, for so long, Bethune Cookman has been the big bad kid on the block. And North Carolina Central didn't have the ability to stand up to him. Now, maybe you're right. The hit by Thompson, they realize we can bring it to them rather than getting hit by them all the time. 
Is that the defining moment for the Eagles this season? On third down, Williams with time. Now flush from the pocket. Keeps the play alive, floats it downfield, and it's caught by Nelson, who's still on his feet. Into Eagles territory and finally dragged down, crossing the 40-yard line after a gain of 38. They lost him. He starts off in the slot receiver on your right side. Two linebackers are going to wall him off on the right, and he's just drifting to the left. Brendan Williams rewarded throwing across his body. And able to pick up the first down is Grayshawn Nelson. So the big pitch and catch as the rain starts to fall here in Durham. And a reminder, coming up Sunday from 8 a.m. to noon, ESPNU brings you college football. In Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, TCU still rolling. The Baylor takes on Texas Tech. So some good games out there. But quickly, the dynamic of this game has changed. We said the win would become a factor. The elements would. It's now blowing so heavily, and the rain is coming in with it. These field conditions are going to deteriorate pretty quickly in terms of the ability to throw the football down the field. They're playing on turf, which helps, but the ability to throw the ball, I think that's going to be gone within the next five minutes. So you're either going to throw it now with the wind at your back, or you're not going to throw it for the rest of the day. Quinn Williams back on the field from the 39-yard line. And Jordan joins him in the backfield. Trips towards the top of your screen is Williams on the quarterback keeper with real estate. And Williams finally brought down by C.J. Moore at the 16-yard line. And the struggles with the zone read continue. Florida International cashed North Carolina Central with the zone read, and they didn't have a mobile quarterback. Williams can run the football. Great job with the ball skills with the fake call in his own number. Gain of 23 yards, back to live action. Jordan Farside and picks up two. He'll make it second down and eight with a tackle by Moore once again. When the rain really starting to come down, and Jay, you as a former quarterback, you understand how wet weather and the wind can impact the throwing game. You can deal with wind, but wind and rain together, pretty tough, because you have to step into your throws. You have to throw a little bit harder with the wind. And when the ball slipper, you just can't grip it as well as you could to make that extra throw to get that extra umph. A lot of times the size of the hands of the quarterback and the arm streak really come into play. Here's Michael D. Jones who checks in for the first time. A little shake and bake in the backfield. Flag on the field. And finally forced out by Moore. And two penalties perhaps coming up against the Wildcats. Yeah, well, three flags down. I believe all of them are holds. <laughs> so one may be a hold by a wide receiver and the other may be on the... Offensive lineman, left tackle. A veteran officiating crew talking things over near the 15-yard line. Rain really starting to come down here in Durham. There are two fouls, both by the offense. Holding, offense, number four. That penalty is declined. Holding, offense, number 66. 10-yard penalty, second down. Jay, we talked with Terry Sims about the penalties this year for the Wildcats, and really it's something they're kind of known for, but they're averaging 10 miscues per game so far. And I told them that was a low number for them. You know, normally Bethune-Cookman, always the most penalized team within the conference, and that just gives you a look at the flags and how much wind we're dealing with here as well. And it's swirling. It's going north and south, and it's starting to go east-west. But Bethune-Cookman must get those penalties under control. Well, they can be drive killers. I mean, in this case here, you had a big run, would have got the ball inside the five. Instead, you're looking at second and 18 from your own 25-yard line. Jones remains in it, running back, second and 18. And now down he goes in the backfield. The sack by Antonio Brown, who got him. And Williams with nowhere to run that time, Jay. Nowhere to run, and they're lucky that the blitz got to the quarterback because there are wide receivers running wide open downfield. Williams not able to stay in the pocket, flushed out with the sack. But North Carolina Central plays so much man-to-man -man coverage that on every given play, you know you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one somewhere across the field. If the offensive line can protect one of those blitz pickups, you can really gash this defense. A loss of eight. It's third down and Riley now for Bethune-Cookman. And Williams fumbles the snap, has to fall on it. Probably the smart move. That play was going nowhere. 
They go back to the penalty instead of basically first and goal. They're out of field goal range after this. After this, and you know, self-inflicted, something they can control with the penalties. And now you look from a, it looks as if they were going to score at least three points at the very least. Becomes a punting situation. All sparked by the holding call by number 66, Dazzy Morris. Jonathan Cagle back on the field, standing at his 47-yard line. Fourth and 27 for the Wildcats. Uh-oh. Somehow is able to escape. He gets the punt away miraculously. It'll take a Wildcats bounce. What a great job. And down at the 11-yard line. Well, we've seen the weather impact just about everything so far. A 27-yard punt. It'll be first and 10 for the Eagles when we come back. Welcome well, the punter for the Wildcats back here in Durham with a miraculous kick after the high snap by Murphy Allen. Jay Walker, Roy Philp out here in Durham. And this is one way to get the job done, Jay, but you know as well as I do. Only time you hear the long snapper's name, if something bad happens, and it was bad there. He blew that one, and Jonathan Cagle really backed him up. I like the poise by Cagle to pick up the ball and kick it right away. So often we see kickers panic, try and run away from the defense. He said, I'm going to get off a one-footed punt, got a roll, and keeps the battlefield position in favor of Bethune-Cookman. Malcolm Bell back in at quarterback. Off the fake, drag down. No gain on the play. Like so often the case for Bethune-Cookman, the strength of this defense, its defensive line, the front four, Todney Evans, a transfer from Middle Tennessee State, Tavion Butler, a transfer from Payne College, and the front four for Bethune-Cookman normally controls the line of scrimmage and allows their linebackers to make wide open tackles like that. Augustus dragged down, a stop made by Robert Way, his second tackle in as many snaps. Well, Way's a good one. Way's a guy that NFL scouts are starting to take a look at after so many years of productivity. Really stepped up his game, the transfer from Marshall University. Third down and long, setting up the screen. Augustus with the jump step off to the races, and the ball comes out right at the 30-yard line. The Wildcats think that they've got it. Number 55, Todney Evans had a good look at it for Bethune-Cookman. See if he comes out of the pile with it. It'll stay with the Eagles. A fortunate bounce here, Jay. Ball down on the field with the conditions. Daquan Richardson forced the fumble on that hit. And then it's just a mad scrum. Yep. We can tell with the rain coming, the conditions not favorable for offensive football right now. Become more aggressive if you're a defender. You make a tackle trying to make a strip. Try and put the helmet on the football a little bit more. Well, you mentioned Evans, too, one of a number of different transfers as he was helped off the field. Middle Tennessee, Marshall, Iowa State, some of the schools that have sent quality players to this Bethune-Cookman program. Tunnel screen, Levante Smith. Makes a move, crosses the 35, a flag on the field. Now Smith getting the start ahead of Devontae Wright. And a last second move by the Eagles to try to spark this offense. We'll check the penalty. Now all the players have long sleeves on. What about the officials? And that was a receiver downfield, number 11. He was covered up and went down. The pass was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, third down. That'll go against Nathan Scruggs, the tight end. They say the pass was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. I thought it was a, a, a lateral pass. I thought it was clearly behind the line of scrimmage, but if you do catch it in front of the line of scrimmage and you cannot go downfield and block. So that'll negate a nice gain on first down. So make it first and 15 and a late substitution. Will prompt a timeout, I believe. The previous play of an ineligible downfield is being reviewed. So back to the replay booth we go. 5.07 remaining first quarter. 
And that's a good one there by my coach Mack. I mean, it's so hard. You caught it, Jay. You see. thought it was good. I mean, look at the formation. By formation, pretty hard to throw that ball in front of the line of scrimmage. He caught that ball behind the line of scrimmage. So the gain on the play should stand after the call is overturning clearly behind the line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from the formation, you practice that. I mean, that's one that wasn't even close. You know, normally you can make the argument, was he blocking while the ball was in the air? But that's why it's so important where this ball was caught. And it was caught behind the line of scrimmage. So it becomes almost like an extended sweep handoff. That's the catch there. It was brought down by Richardson, finally. And, and part of the reason why I really, I was curious about that because I like the play call. Right now, things are hard in the trenches, hard to hold on to the football if you're a running back. So many bodies coming in different directions. Why not put the ball in the hands of your playmakers in open space and force the defensive backs from Bethune-Cookman to make tackles, to create turnovers, rather than dealing with their linebackers and their defensive linemen who are a proven commodity. Well, that should give the Eagles a seven-yard gain up to the 37-yard line on first down. These two teams both tied for the MEAC championship a year ago with six and two records in the conference. Two of the five teams that ended up tying for first place. And Jay, as we've talked about in some of our previous broadcasts, it's all about the Celebration Bowl this year. Both of these programs think they can get there. They both have the talent to do it. I think for North Carolina Central and Coach Mack, it's proven they belong. You know, I, I can't remember the last time there was a five-way tie in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, let alone winning the conference with two losses. This could be a, a one-loss season, so you must win this game early. And for Bethune-Cookman, at a certain point, they controlled their own destiny. They let it get away when they got beat by Hampton, the team that they should have defeated on paper. They lost that game, and then that opened it up for everybody else. Well, we were there in Hampton, Virginia for that contest. I reminded Terry Sims about it this week in our telephone call, our conference call with him. I said, Roy, I don't need you to remind me of the score. I remember it very well. <laughs> and especially the fact that you were there. <laughs> so I've seen Bethune-Cookman win a couple games. I don't know how many games you've seen Bethune-Cookman win, Roy. So uh, if they don't, if they walk away from this game without a victory, uh, stay away from Coach Sims yeah, for a little while. that's right. Here's the call for Marcus Ruin Woods. Field has changed. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. As a result, we have a completion. It will be second and three on the 37. The clock will start on my ready. Now, most importantly, they got it right. It took a couple of minutes, but they got the call right. Good look there. Coach Sims taking over from this program. You talk about high expectations and shoes to fill. I mean, Bethune-Cookman, the past five years, has been one of the premier programs in all of black college football. Fortunate to keep his offensive and defensive coordinators. Second down and three. Their deep handoff, close to the 40-yard line. That should be enough for the first down. Look at this. Impressive job by the defense for Bethune-Cookman. And here inside of O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Doing our very best to stay as dry as we possibly can. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. Still scoreless, more than halfway through our first quarter. Our first down coming up for the Eagles. Darrell McLean with the carry and a short pickup. What I was getting to on that last play, look at Bethune-Cookman bringing physicality to the game, but look at North Carolina Central standing up to Bethune-Cookman. Right now, Bethune-Cookman will get in your head. They will try to be more physical than you are. North Carolina Central does not seem to back down at this point in the game, led by the senior leadership on the offensive line. Malcolm Bell, the redshirt junior out of Richmond, Virginia. McLean, a stutter step. Sandwich as he's finally brought down to the turf. Short of midfield and stopped by Bridges. It'll bring up third and short. That's what Central's going to do. They're going to run off tackle. They'll run in between the guards very rarely. They like to run off tackle behind Jamal Simonette and Desmond Cooper. They're two tackles who are two of the best in the conference, they feel. Desmond Cooper has plenty of size at 6'6", 325 pounds. Augustus back in with the handoff, needs to cross the 50. And this one's going to be very close, finally brought down by Drayton. 
And it all depends on the spot. You said he had to get to the 50. Looks like he was right on it. The mark uh, marked him a little bit short. So decision time potentially coming up for Jerry Mack. Facing, facing perhaps fourth down and an inch and a half. What do you do right here this early in the game? Midfield, inclement weather, all the different things happening. You go for it. I think you go for it. You know, if, if you lose this when they get the ball back on the 50-yard line, okay, make them drive on you. But I'm surprised they didn't go to their two tight end package and heavy. Really go for it. But this is how you make a statement. This is They call it their nest. Protect your nest. Pick up 12 inches. Eagles two for three on fourth down this season. Handoff. Far side, that should be enough. Augustus picks it up. Trenton Bridges again the tackle, but not before he had first down yardage. Statement. I mean, it's a statement right here. You have to be able to get it. There was some penetration, but Augustus kept the shoulder pad level down and picked it up kind of easily. Good job of running, and that's the type of play you have to make when you're trying to get the respect from a program that's had your number. And Jay, interesting on that play, Cleavon Davis, the starting right tackle today, they shuffled up that offensive line. They went right behind him as the pass is incomplete, looking for Jalen Wilkes. Drayton in coverage. When they talk about Cleavon Davis, they'll tell you he's the best guard in the conference. They feel that he is the best guard, best offensive lineman in the conference. When they need to pick up a yard, look for them to go behind number 56. To Smith, short pickup, make it third down and eight. Donald Smith and Daquan Richardson with the tackle. Now this is where you don't want to be if you're North Carolina Central, third and long, because now you bring the defensive lineman into play. Todney Evans, Kevin Thompson, the front four for Bethune-Cookman, peel back trying to get at your quarterback. On third down, Bell with time, down the field, caught, short of first down yardage. Armani Lanier makes the grab and brought down quickly by Richardson. And I think you go for it again. With the play selection, with uh, the quick pass, I think what Coach Mack was saying, if we don't get it, we're going to go for it again. Got rid of the ball quickly, get the most out of your pre-snap breed. If you give me a completed pass, we can go for it on fourth down. If not, we're going to punt it. And I think that was predetermined with the previous play selection. Fourth down and five. Eagles now three out of four on fourth down this season. And they'll call a timeout and talk this one over. Timeout on the field. We'll take one with them under two minutes to play here in our first quarter in Durham. Welcome. Who's in? Who's in? Everybody trying to get to the final four back here in Durham. Both of these teams would love to play in the Celebration Bowl at the end of this season. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott back here with you. 13th play of the drive coming up for NC Central. And after the timeout, Jay, the second call by the Eagles, they're going to punt this one out of there. What do you think? Obviously, they didn't get the look that they wanted. And still, with the, we with the weather and the elements, deciding to win the battle of field position, can't second-guess this decision. Tilke, the 44-yard line, floats a wobbler to Brown. And the 34-yard punt, it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats. Well, don't miss any of the action while you're on the go this fall. Stream any game live by downloading the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. Jay, as much as we've been traveling the last couple of weeks, walking through the airports around the country, nothing like keeping up to date with all the scores and the different games taking place. Comes in handy. Wildcats taking over deep in their own territory, this time from the 11-yard line. 
Anthony Jordan back on the field, as is Quentin Williams. This turned out to be a defensive slugfest so far. Four-man front for the Eagles, deep handoff Jordan. Hit hard in the hole by Jeremy Thompson. And I tell you what, when Thompson hits you today, you're going to feel it. He's bringing his lunch pail with him to work. The junior from Durham, North Carolina, number seven, right in the middle of your screen. Watch him finish it off. Stay with it. They are attacking. They play a, a 4 2 5 concept. Four defensive linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive bats. And CJ Moore kind of plays that hybrid linebacker slash safety. With time across the middle, the dump off to Jordan. Needed eight, he'll pick up about seven. Finally brought down by Jordan Miles, one of those two linebackers. And third down coming up for Bethune Cookman. Bethune brings in the heavy Porsche personnel. They're trying to load it up, bring the beef up front. Extra linemen, no wide receivers in the game. High snap, Jordan's able to take the handoff. Only needed a yard, he'll pick that up and then some. The initial contact by Trey Smith. And there may have been about five different tight ends on the field on that one formation. And I was curious because you, you blow the whistle when forward progress has stopped. Jordan had some, he had some folks with him, pushing him from behind. And, I don't know if his forward progress was stopped. He was still going forward. You can tell folks are getting chippy right now. On first down, tunnel screen. Nelson makes the grab. And will lose a pair of yards. Jeremy Thompson in the area. Well, scoreless first quarter of the books here in Durham as these two defenses take hold Bethune Cookman and North Carolina Central. Second quarter coming up. Stay tuned. They'll start of the second quarter back in Durham. Rain holding off momentarily. The wind's still a big-time factor. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott here with you. MIAC opener for NC Central. Bethune Cookman at 3-1 overall, already 1-0 in the league. And the Wildcats with the football. There's another second one, and 12. Another one of those dangerous formations. Man-to-man -man coverage across the board. You really are putting a lot of pressure on your pass coverage. They'll set up the screen pass. Jones with real estate, far side. And shoved out of bounds, crossing the 30-yard line. Miles with the tackle. Jones, a very explosive athlete out of the backfield and versatile. And Jones is a former walk-on, and he's kind of been behind the shadow of Mike Jackson for years and Anthony Jordan, but good job, great vision, getting to the outside. Nice play call. If you're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, if you can get a screen with the blocker on the running back's defender, you can pick up good yardage. Leydig helped off the field. Preseason all, Miak perform on the offensive line. A gain of 10, third down and two here. And Jones stacked up to the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Antonio Brown, who's made his presence felt here in the first half, prevents first down yardage here. We really have to give credit to the Eagles' defensive line, just their defense as a whole. They are not getting pushed around. Great job by Antonio Brown, the defensive end of Reading is key. He had responsibility for the running back. Able to finish off the tackle. Brown, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, so maybe that explains it. He's not intimidated by Florida guys coming in here. Not at all. Jonathan Cagle back on the field. This time gets the snap, and the punt nearly blocked. That may have been tipped. C.J. Moore. That's a live ball. That hit the central helmet. And picked up on the fumble recovery. A lot of things happening in that sequence. Uh, my question, Jay, was that punt partially tipped right off the foot of Cagle? Jeremy Davis ends up with a fumble recovery. Watch this. Yeah, that was C.J. Moore with a nice move to the inside. And it hits off of the helmet of a central player. Comes a live ball. 
running down that time for the Eagles. Frederick Henry Ajuda. Unfortunate bounce. And Bethune Cookman gets the football back. And Quinn Williams back on the field out of the pistol. Jordan, near side, Anthony Jordan. Deep into Eagles territory, finally drugged down at the 23-yard line by C.J. Moore. And a gain of 25, Jay. This is what Jordan likes to do. He wants to run in between the tackles, makes Jeremy Thompson miss. And it's very tough to bring down. We're talking about the physical specimen that Jordan is. And great runners, hard nosed runners, they like playing in these type of conditions. Seven carries, 55 yards for Anthony Jordan. And they'll stay with a hot hand, a big hit behind the line. He's brought down for a loss, C.J. Moore. Boy, Moore has been a one-man wrecking crew at times. Moore knows what's at stake. And they made a nice adjustment. The defensive coordinator, Granville Eastman, Said they're starting to get some momentum in the running game. Let's get C.J. Moore a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. You see him now coming down, number 32, center your screen. He's the guy that's giving them the number count whenever it's a run play. So right now you see eight men closer to the line of scrimmage. Nobody for him to cover, so he's just kind of roaming around trying to see what he sees. And those receivers on Adams. That one's batted down at the line. Brown again. A 6 3 sophomore used every inch of that frame to send it back where it came from. Unblocked on the end of the line of scrimmage. And once again, Antonio Brown doing a good job reading his keys. Almost came up with the interception. Third down and 11 yards to go. Eagles showing pressure. The shotgun snap wins with time in the pocket folds. A fumble on the play. Flag on the field as well. The Eagles recovered the fumble, and let's see how they make sense out of all of this. Antonio Brown right in the mix again. There was a hold on Bethune Cookman. I know that. They're going to call Jordan for the hold, but that looked like a fumble. And once again, Central standing up to Bethune Cookman and Bethune Cookman starting to get frustrated pushing and uh, shoving after the whistles. This is impressive thus far by North Carolina Central defensively really standing up to Bethune Cookman. Well, Jay you mentioned it earlier the Wildcats have been the big bully down the block for so many years and we're seeing the Eagles really stand tall against a very physical Bethune Cookman team. Marcus Woods are Lead referee today trying to sort out everything that happened there. This has to be Central's ball. There was a hold called on Anthony Jordan. And if Central recovered the fumble, it should be their ball. There's no foul for holding on the play. On the play, we did have a fumble and a recovery by the offense. It's going to be fourth down. They said no foul, but let's take a look at number one in white. Blitz is coming on the edge. Hooks him around and continues to hook him as he's going. That's when the flag came in. That, so they picked it up. See the flag coming right in that area there, and it's a fumble. Jordan did a great job to get the football back at the last possible second. Well, after all of that, Wildcats keep the football, and now facing fourth and long will punt it away. Cagle sends it right into the teeth of that win. Down to the six-yard line. It'll be first and ten for the Eagles when we come back. North Carolina Central University is one of our nation's most prized assets. Our law school ranks fourth in the nation for clinical opportunities. We offer cutting-edge technology in the biosciences. Help students master their craft. At North Carolina Central University, we are a first choice premier institution. We're all familiar with this Axe Daily Fragrances, but 
What you wouldn't have seen is this. Axe dry spray antiperspirant. Why are you touching your armpit? I was just checking to see if it's dry. Don't. That's weird. The first ever dry spray antiperspirant from Axe. Richard Sherman! Richard! You're gonna give me a splinter! Not now, little voice in my stomach. We need protein, and I'm not talking about Jack Lynx. I want all-natural Alberto beef jerky. You sure do know jerky, little voice in my stomach. You got that right. Do you ever just take a nap? Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. 36 hours ago, you were Jeff and Susan. Now, you're mom and dad. But you've got this. You read the baby manuals. You baby-proofed the house. Bought yourself a safe SUV. You're totally ready for this. Right? Heart health's important. So you may take an omega-3 supplement, but it's the ingredients inside that really matter for heart health. New Bear Pro Ultra Omega-3 has two times the concentration of EPA and DHA as a leading omega-3 supplement. New Bear Pro Ultra Omega-3. Back here inside of O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. Here in Durham, North Carolina, the rain coming down as it is across the southeast. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, marching Wildcats making the trip up from Daytona. What has been a scoreless start here just getting underway in our second quarter. Seventh all-time meeting between these two teams. The lone North Carolina Central victory coming all the way back in 1994. Malcolm Bell the handoff. Straight ahead goes Augustus. Bullies his way. First down yardage across the 15-yard line. Brought down by Simmons. One of the few times we see North Carolina Central try to attack the interior defense of Bethune-Cookman, a team that likes to run off tackle. But picked up good yardage there with Augustus running in between the tackles. Far side run, big yardage, crossing the 30 up to the 40-yard line. And with the carry, Ramon Simpson, a redshirt freshman. We know what they like to do. I just told you the previous play. They're going to run off tackle on the outside. They'll run inside just to keep you honest. But this is the team that excels on running at the perimeter. Good job of getting outside. And Ramon Simpson, the freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, with the big game. But it looks like it's coming back. Penalty goes against Cleavon Davis, a first-team All-MEAC performer on the offensive line. And Jay, that on a gate, a gain of 25 yards. Jerry Mack not pleased with that sequence. Those kinds of penalties in this kind of weather particularly costly. He's really upset because he wants to throw the football. So if he can get some yardage running the football and they bring it back, it makes him go back to throwing it. Bell with time in the seam and it's caught. Ball pops out at the last second, however. Orgella in coverage, a former walk-on. And apply the contact against Brandon Galloway at just the right moment. Heavy wind and rain, and it's going to be tough to hold on to a ball like that when you have to extend and leave your body. Almost impossible with these type of conditions. On second down, Eagles with the wind at their back. On the fake pitch by Bell. Needed to cross the 25. He'll come up about three yards short. And don't forget, Wednesday at 7 p.m., women's college volleyball is on ESPNU as number two Texas takes on Baylor, followed by Tennessee against LSU at 9, exclusively on ESPNU and streaming live on Watch ESPN. I've been following a little bit of college volleyball lately. I can see you calling some volleyball. Florida got beat twice last week. That's right, They're a they top did. ten ranked team and two losses consecutively. Back to live action, third and two, movement up front, and that'll cost him another five. False start, offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, third down. It's a talented left tackle, Desmond Cooper, you were talking about earlier, Jay. Plenty of size, 6'6", 325 pounds from Stafford, Virginia. 
playing at a very high level this year. It's the first year starter, but they think he can be a good one. Instead of third and short. Third down and seven coming up. Rain letting up momentarily here as well. Bethune Cookman showing pressure. And a quick pitch will be picked off. Intercepted. Tyree Simmons with the pick and the biggest play of the game so far. First interception of the season for the senior out of St. Augustine. They baited him. It was a good job by Simmons. You said they were going to bring pressure. Yogi Jones dialed up a zone blitz. Watch him just take a peek. They bring the defensive ends with two safeties down inside the box. Great recognition by Tyree Simmons. So you, you think they're coming, then that's just a safe zone blitz there. Looking for the hot read. Robert Way makes the initial contact to force a deflection. And Tyree Simmons right there for the interception. Second turnover in this game, won by both Bethune Cookman and North Carolina Central. And a new quarterback in as well. And Larry Brim. Hand off Jordan straight ahead, brought down by Antonio Brown. Gain of four yards, it'll make it second and goal. And this is one of those cases where head coach Terry Sims sure told Pry, let's bring in Brim. We're going to run the football. We've got the ball inside their 10. Defense created the turnover. Time to play smash mouth. Let's get our running quarterback in the game along with our 225-pound running back. Anthony Jordan with 30 career rushing touchdowns. Low snap. And Jordan finds Paydirt. Bullies his way across the goal line. A five-yard scoring scamper. And a late flag on the field as well. But Bethune-Cookman strikes first. It was hammer time. It was muscle time in there. You, you could get that sense that they were going to try and force the football, their will, into the end zone. And they were rewarded with the touchdown run by Jordan. Touchdown is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number one. That is his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. We'll assess that on the kick. Great job by Brim. Good in the low snap, getting the ball to Jordan. Jordan makes contact and runs through the defensive back, Theo Livingston. And all running backs, you make a hit like that, they're going to let you know about it. Well, that one's going to hurt tomorrow morning, I think, too, for Livingston. Hernandez on for the extra point. Kick is up. It is good. And our new score with 9.28 remaining in the first half. 7-0. Bethune-Cookman strikes first, but the big play there, the interception by Tyree Simmons. Taking it all the way back inside the 10-yard line for the Wildcats. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Wall Clippers and Trimmers. Real guys, real grooming. Visit wallrealguys.com. Well, the marching Wildcat band certainly enjoying their trip so far from Daytona Beach. 7-0 Bethune-Cookman with the lead. The White Hats. I always tell everybody when you watch a Bethune-Cookman play, if you see those White Hats in the game, it's normally bad news for your football team. They support this team, and it seems like the football program thrives off them. They have a great chemistry. One of the best in the country, Roy. Now the story so far, Jay, has been the defense, and the Wildcats certainly with the advantage there, plus Anthony Jordan. 11 carries, 63 yards in that five-yard touchdown run moments ago. And something just to note, he was assessed a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. He's been very talkative during this game. Hope he can keep his emotions in check. They're really going to need him for the rest of this game. If he gets another penalty like that, he will be ejected. So the kickoff backed up to the 20-yard line as a result, right into the win. And the Eagles with good field position to begin their next drive. It'll be first and 10 for NC Central. Don't forget Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern, the 2015 Geico High School Football Showcase is right here on ESPNU as Bergen Catholic takes on DePaul Catholic. That's exclusively on ESPNU and streaming live on Watch ESPN. 
Here's a look at Anthony Jordan, 60 yards on the ground so far. He suffered through a couple of injury plague seasons, granted an extra year of eligibility, and so far utilizing that quite well in his final season. Malcolm Bell back on the field, calls his own number on the zone read, and tripped up crossing the 45. The tackle by Borgella. It looks like they're going to catch a break right now. Don't know how long it'll last for, but the wind has calmed down a little bit. The rain has stopped. If you're going to throw the football now, this may be one of those downs you want to take a shot in your passing game. Gain of eight yards. And Bell again on the keeper. Needed two. Gain one. The stop by Thompson. A pickup of one. Thompson's going to be a good one. Just a sophomore. And when you think about this defensive line for Bethune, they start two sophomores and two freshmen. So gone are guys like the Brandon Richardson and Eric Williams, who were the staples. But it seems like they just reload down in Daytona Beach. Yeah, Yogi Jones very enthusiastic in talking about his young front four. A conversation with him this week. That'll be a first down. Jamal Thomas with the stop. And Augustus needed a yard. He picked up two. Thomas also struggling to get up off the turf. Now, North Carolina Central played Bethune Cookman close last year down to the Sunshine State. Actually led 14 to 7 at halftime, but Jay just 20 yards of total offense the final two quarters as Bethune Cookman ran away with it. Got to think the Wildcats have the edge mentally over NC Central. Here's the tunnel screen. Levante Smith. We have another first down for the Eagles. Shoved out of bounds by Borgella. They get a good look at Charles Yogi Jones, defensive coordinator for Bethune Cookman, dial him up and he's got a young group. But we saw what he did on the last zone blitz, one of the best defensive minds you'll see. Stack the box here. Patient cut in the hole. That'll lead to a gain of five yards. Donald Smith brings down Darrell McLean, who just checked back in. Redshirt freshman from right up the road in Cary, North Carolina. Let's give credit to the Eagles. They got good field position. They've managed to move the ball 25 yards on this drive. Can they keep it going? You have to think sooner or later, Bethune Cookman's going to tighten up their run defense, try to take the Eagles out of their comfort zone. Next two wide receivers, top of your screen, second and five. Here's McLean straight ahead with running room. A nice stutter step off to the races and dragged down from behind by Robert Way. But another first down for North Carolina Central. Donald Smith missed what looked to be a sure tackle there. This is just great vision by McLean. Talk about him being the fastest running back. Fumble forced by the turf there at the end. From the 19, Smith in motion, handoff Augustus. And North Carolina Central bringing the physical play to line of scrimmage. And I think it goes back to, we know they like to run off tackle, but give credit to, to Carl Jones and Clavon Davis doing a good job winning their battles, number 55 and 56. They're doing a good job of winning their battles, really controlling their man and having secondary running routes for the running backs. Second down and two. Here's Malcolm Bell, far side. Late flag on the field as Bell close to first down yardage. We've seen a lot of penalties here in our first two quarters. Holding offense, number 82, 10-yard penalty. Second down. Now the reserve wide receiver, Armani Lanier. Not what you want to see, Jay. Yeah, the wide receiver on the left side. Got him pretty good underneath the shoulder pads. And yeah, 
right there once the quarterback comes into play. Official's able to make that call. He was turning him with the shoulder pad. That's a no-no. We've seen one holding penalty cost Bethune Cookman likely points. Smith in motion on the end of the round, looking to throw. Heaves one towards the end zone, and it's going to be batted away. Elliot Miller and Arthur Williams down there in coverage. And Miller, the freshman from Miami, outstanding in the end zone. And that was a run pass option. I actually thought that Smith, who threw the ball, could have run for some positive yards. He, he made the pitch quick and threw it right away. Good coverage in the secondary. He's looking for Jalen Wilkes. Ninth play of the drive coming up on third and long. Malcolm Bell with time. Across the middle and incomplete, and Welch probably would have scored had he brought that one in. And that's a catch the young freshman has to make. He beat out some seniors for a starting role, and this is a good read by Malcolm Bell. Attacks the defense in the weak spot. Jalen Wilkes just unable to hold on and come up with the catch. Nine grabs on the season for the freshman out of Greenville, South Carolina. Nigel McCauley on the field for a 36-yard field goal. Perfect this season and certainly well within his range with the wind at his back. Snap is high and the kick is good. So the Eagles finally on the scoreboard with 6.02 remaining in the first half and our new score, 7-3. Okay, what is this? Mm, it's chewy. Really icy. Back here in Durham after the nine-play 50-yard drive. North Carolina Central on the scoreboard, 7-3. to three. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, and fans here inside of this fantastic venue looking to stay warm, eating some warm food here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. And the Eagles trying to get things going. Trailing by four under a second-year head coach. And this has really been a physical game. It has. It's been a slugfest. Both defenses have done a great job. The offenses are just now starting to come to life. But I think in the case of North Carolina Central, they've done a good job of standing up for themselves, but the offense is yet to follow. From the five-yard line, Drayton. Sacked as he crosses the 20. Well, Anthony Jordan has been the story so far. He's been very impressive, very physical. The elements dictate that you have to have a workhorse running back, and Anthony Jordan is just that. The fifth-year senior from Atlanta, Georgia, has been running the ball with the physical nature in between the tackles. And talk about finishing off a run. Have a seat, son. Anthony Jordan getting the job done for the Wildcats. He's been their ground game. He's done a good job. Last two wins for Bethune-Cookman over North Carolina Central. Jay, they've rushed for a combined 760 yards. I'm telling you, they used to push him around. And that's why I say give credit to Central. It seems like they're standing up for themselves now as we see Anthony Jordan creep up that all-time touchdown list. Larry Brim in the contest at quarterback and dives his way across the 25, brought down by Brown. A quality pickup on first down for the backup quarterback. Man, they're, just, they're changing their backfield, so they've got Brim, the backup quarterback in the game, along with Michael Jones, who's the backup running back, putting some fresh legs in the offensive backfield for the Wildcats. See Brim's numbers this season, impressive. He led the MIAC in passing efficiency for most of last season. He's the more athletic quarterback. We talked with offensive coordinator Jim Pry this week. He called him a shot in the arm, a spark for their offensive unit. Patient run this time and a short beat, short gain rather. Bring up third down and two. Darius Sproul the stop. And Brim can be dangerous because he's a very good runner, but he's a more than capable thrower. Not a great passer, but has a strong arm, can deliver the ball. In this type of weather, if he gets the ball out of his hands quickly, allows his wide receivers an opportunity to make a play in the open field. Jones in the backfield, out of the pistol formation. Dragged down behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll lose yardage. Jaquan Smith lassoed him around. 
And Smith remains on the turf at the 30. The Eagles defense standing tall. They've done it time and time again. Just great recognition. They are willing to sell out and put that eighth man in the box to win the number count battle puts a lot of stress on the secondary. And if you're not willing to throw the ball downfield to cover your pass protection, then they're going to expose you. Jonathan Cagle punts this one away. Fair caught at the 31. It'll be first and 10 for North Carolina Central after the 40 yard punt. 332 remaining first half. Wildcats by four. What's happening here? You're watching college football presented by McDonald's here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, Bethune Cookman versus North Carolina Central. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, glad you could join us. It's turned out to be a rain soaked MEAC affair. Exactly what we expected. Seven to three, our score. And the deep handoff goes nowhere. No gain on first down. Kerry White checks in for the first time for the Eagles. With around three minutes left in the half, your defense has played lights out. I really think it's important that for North Carolina Central, first, you don't put your defense back on the field in this half, that you figure out a way to at the very least pick up a couple of first downs, particularly throwing the football with the elements going away. Check that Simpson on the carry, and here's Bell who gets a first down. And Malcolm Bell's had a couple of physical runs today, Jay, sustaining drives for the Eagles. He's been the running game for them. We've seen Augustus with a couple nice runs, but for the most part, Bell's been able to run and pick up positive yardage. I think that may give you the flexibility to maybe go in an empty backfield and allow Bell to be your running game. Redshirt Jr. out of Richmond, Virginia, gains 12. And off of play action, the dump off pass is incomplete, and Augustus was fighting that one from the onset. Andreas Augustus does have four catches this year, one for a touchdown. It looked uncomfortable in that last play. When it's wet like this, you want to set him up with a double move. You know, slant goes work. If you can protect long enough to go for a double move, you can use the weather to your advantage. On second down, Bell with all kinds of time and now running room. Tries to get to the edge, he'll get there and inside of Bethune-Cookman territory. Demarcus Womack with the pressure, but finally stopped by Daquan Richardson. This is a great job by Daquan Richardson of keeping him short of the first down. Watch number 22 turn on the Jets and the speed to make that tackle. Makes it close and they actually gave it to him on the spot, but I'm sure defensive coordinator Jones really appreciates the effort by that young man, Richardson. Gain of 10 yards. Richardson tied for the team lead in tackles coming into today. As the lights are on here in Durham. Smith in motion, handoff. Near side, that's Augustus again. Shoved out of bounds by Williams. You've got to get it going. I mean, your offense likes to throw the football. Throw the football. You've crossed midfield. You've got the ball. You control the clock a little bit. Throw the football. This is your time. It's not raining right now. I don't think you can expect to run the football in for a score. You need to establish your pass again and see if Malcolm Bell's going to be able to throw with the win. The win at his back. Bell lobs it down the field. Wide open and incomplete. And Darrell McLean dropped it. Only one catch on the season for just three yards. Robert Way applied the pressure, and that's one the Eagles would love to have back. And that's the play selection that you have to have. They were trying to set them up to get that play there. Great job by Bell. Look at all the pressure on Bell. He doesn't have long to get rid of this football. He sees him come and throws it off his back foot. Accurate pass. And you just have to make that catch. Even if you catch it going into the ground and you don't run after catch, you at least come away with the catch. And with 154 remaining in the first half, the Eagles use their final timeout facing third and seven. 
Shea. We'll keep it right here, but certainly it's been a first half of missed opportunities for both teams. Jay, how about those power rankings this week? What are we looking at? There's kind of what's at stake. Grambling and Tennessee State. Grambling's there because they're playing pretty good football. Tennessee State, they got my eye. They're 3-1. and one. Their only loss on the year, Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State may not lose another game all year. Number five, I think you're taking a look at them. Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats show with an impressive win on the road at Grambling. This is a team that could be around for a little while. Number four, let's go down in the SWAT. Southern University, Dawson Modem, seen that team up person. They get the eye test. They're a very good ball squad. Number three, North Carolina a and I know they were projected to win the Mid-East Athletic Conference, but South Carolina State beat them last year. I give the advantage to South Carolina State right now, the number two team with Javon Hargrave, one of the best players at this level. And number one, can they go wire to wire? Alcorn started the season number one. Now you're starting to get in the swag play. It's going to be a little bit tougher for head coach Jay Hobson and the boys, but they're the number one team in black house football right now. Jay, okay, what well, we saw SC State up close and personal two weeks ago. Hargrave's a real deal. Tunnel screen. Whoops. Needs to fight his way across the 40. A late flag on the field again. He has the first down. Third down and seven, he picks up eight. We'll check the penalty. And this appears like it'll go against the Wildcats. After the play, personal foul, defense number 55, 15-yard penalty, first down. Todney Evans, a redshirt freshman. See, these are the penalties that, that start to hurt Bethune Cookman. The personal fouls, the pushing after the whistle. I mean, we've seen two of those. See, number 55. Oh, he comes and hits somebody defenseless in the back. For one, you're hitting them in the back, and two, the play was clearly open. Unnecessary. That's a mental error. And the good team's going to make you pay. You're giving them an extra 15 yards. Now they're in field goal range automatically. Phil Cookman came in averaging 10 penalties per game, three in the first half, but for 40 costly yards. Hand up with Lane and spins his way down to the 15. Donald Smith with a tackle. Under 90 seconds to play in our first half. Important to note, North Carolina Central out of timeout. Men and 13 in the college football games, pretty long because the clock will stop after a first down, but that could come into play if you get another tackle in the field of play. Empty backfield for Malcolm Bell. Good pressure. On second down, backside pressure, gets it away. Smith the grab. That should be good enough for the first down. Tackled by Borgella. Now the clock should stop for the first down, so they're continuing to run it. That's a first down. The clock should stop. So they're going to have to put some more time back on the clock. Seems like when he made that catch, there were almost 60 seconds. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 51 seconds. 51 seconds. Well, I had 10 seconds back. I can live with 51, but... Take another look at this. We'll see where the clock should be. Right down maybe 54, 53. 54, 53 seconds, yep. Well, nonetheless, a very important possession for the Eagles trailing Bethune-Cookman by 4J. Having beaten this bunch since way back in 1994 to take the lead right before halftime would be huge. Oh, that would be huge just for this program psyche. You know, they really, really... You know, for the defense to play as well as they have. And if they can go into halftime with the lead, I think that'd be a huge boost of energy for the Eagles. And once again, is Bethune-Cookman going to learn their lesson? Personal foul, two-minute situation, you give them 15 yards, team that has no timeouts, those type of penalties you must overcome. Clock finally reset. We saw a good long look at Jerry Mack in his second season here at NC Central. I'd watch some type of trick play here. Misdirection. Run pass option. Play it in the backfield. He'll get the kill. The patient run turns it upfield. And lasso down at the five-yard line. Now you have to get up. So you have to get up. When you call that traditional play, you have to get up. If you kill it, you're costing yourself a down. I would have called two plays 
in the huddle. Still plenty of time um, on yeah. second and goal, and really no need to spike it there. It, no need to spike it, and now you've got one shot to get into the end zone. So that's the, the risk you have when you call the traditional sweep that far, and he doesn't get out of bounds. You know, now you're looking at one shot at the end zone, and then you're forced to have to kick a field goal. See, I mean, this is a long developing play. And the moment he gets tackled in bounds, now the clock is ticking away. And you end up spiking the ball anyway, costing yourself a down. Maybe you call another play and you, you risk those five seconds. Third and goal, what do you like here? I think you try and get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. They do have a small defensive secondary between Cookman. None of their cover people are over 5'10". And a false start will cost them another five yards. What should have been the 12th play of the drive. False start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, third down. Carl Jones, the center. When you talk about it, the, the secondary for Bethune-Cookman, number 20, top of your screen, Jocelyn Borgella, 5'6". Simmons, the safety, 5'9". Elliott Miller, cornerback, number 35, bottom of your screen, 5'9". I'm taking a chance on one of those matchups. Five penalties against the Eagles in this first half for 35 yards. Third and goal, the pass is nearly picked off. Kevin Thompson nearly brought it in, but bats it away. That'll prevent the touchdown, Jay, and the Bethune-Cookman defense has been very stingy. Yeah, trying to stick a slant pattern in there or, or even something. I don't know if they'd have got out of bounds. I don't think you have to take a chance throwing it in the end zone. Thompson shook it up momentarily. They have to come out. 6'4", 230-pound sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland. It's close, but with the wide hash marks and with the way the wind is blowing, this chip shot is no gimme. The distance is close, but the wind is pushing hard to the right. Kyle's perfect on this season. Including one here today. Sneaks it just inside the upright. A pair of drives bogged down deep in Bethune-Cookman territory. The Eagles trail by only a point. Keep it right here for the final 16 plus seconds. Well, that last drive all getting started. The miscues we've seen. We see the Wildcats with the interception setting up the lone touchdown of the game. Drop pass there by the Eagles. Missed opportunities here in the first two quarters, Jay. And, and when you're trying to beat a team that's had your number over the years, you must make those plays. That's what's lacking for North Carolina Central right now. Who's going to step up and make the big play? For Bethune-Cookman and head coach Terry Sims, their running back, Jordan, has really stepped up and done a good job with the tough nose running in between the tackles. North Carolina Central head coach Jerry Mack still looking for that guy that's going to step up and help him knock off Bethune-Cookman. And that was a 13-play, 59-yard drive in just over three minutes. Eagles back on the scoreboard, trailing here at home by a point. Miak opener for Jerry Mack at NC Central. Love to start conference play with a victory, but a lot of work to be done here today. Hopkins and Drayton back deep to receive as Marquis Drayton takes it inside his own 15. And Corral short of the 30-yard line. Now just over 10 seconds remaining. If you're Bethune-Cookman, do you take a couple of chances here or just no, head to the all. locker room? Head to the locker room. You've got a one-point lead. I mean, your offense really hasn't done much thus far in this game. The defense has helped them out. Don't jeopardize putting them back on the field. In these conditions, I think you come out you take a knee and you uh, remain upbeat that you're winning, even though it's by the slimmest of margins. Well, Brim back on the field. North Carolina Central will receive the second half kickoff. And with 10 seconds remaining, perhaps time for one more play. And Jordan. Goes nowhere. Richard Mitchell, the initial contact on what will be the final play of our first half. 
Well, if you like defense, you've come to the right place here in Durham. 7-6, to six, our halftime score. Bethune-Cookman, the one-point lead over North Carolina Central. Well, much more headed your way. Halftime report and also our second half. Stay tuned. Back with college football presented by McDonald's inside O'Kelly Riddick Stadium here in Durham, North Carolina. Bethune Cookman, the one point lead against the homestanding Eagles of North Carolina Central. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott back here with you. The story so far has been the defense as we take a look at our first half highlights and really the biggest play, Jay, the interception by C.J. Moore and the, the different possibilities defensively for both of these teams really taking hold. And it was a good job early on. Bill Cookman had chances, but it was the defense that sparked it with the turnover that gave them the ball inside the 10-yard line, and Anthony Jordan able to punch it in. But two defenses that have been exchanging blows. Offense has been very minimal here in the second half. It's going to come down to some big plays. You just have a feeling neither team's going to be able to drive the ball down the field on the field. Well, three different drives thwarted in the red zone. Two leading the field goals by North Carolina Central. One prevented Bethune Cookland from even scoring. I look at the Eagles and what they did in the first half. It was a defensive struggle, as you mentioned, but Malcolm Bell averaging over seven yards per carry. I'd kind of like to see more of him. I think he'll be the run game in the second half until Bethune Cookland figures out a way to stop Bell from running the football he's been able to call his own number find a couple creases in there in the running game and i think for bethune cookman i think he goes back to how do we get anthony jordan back on track how do we get him running downhill the best football player on the field it seems like when he's there with this punishing running style now Devonte right back deep to receive our second half kickoff Terry Sims in his first season with the Wildcats off to a 3-1 start, but being challenged on the road, always hard to win the road game in conference, isn't it? Conference play is always special. This is the first game in conference for North Carolina Central, so they really want to win this football game at all costs. Bethune-Cookman is already 1-0 in the conference, having already defeated Savannah State. And keep this in mind, what I said earlier, the weather conditions have lightened up a little bit. What does North Carolina Central want to do? They want to pass the football. While they have the weather behind them, wouldn't be surprised if Coach Mack decides to step on the accelerator and throw the football. Bonnie Francis with the kickoff fielded by Wright from the 17. And there he goes across the 40. Good field position for the Eagles to start our third quarter. And although everything says, hey, you know, you're running the ball well, Bell's doing a good job running it. We've seen some good runs from Augustus. You, know, you still, you are who you are. And, and this is a team that's a throw first, run second football team. And I think that's why we haven't seen them score a touchdown yet because the first half said you have to run the football to score. They couldn't run it all the way. They could get close and show you some spurts. But if they're going to put points on the board, it's going to be by passing the football on the right arm of Malcolm Bell. Bell, 7 of 16 through the air in the first half. Tunnel screen to Wilkes, makes a move and shoved out of bounds. That should be a flag. Crossing the 45, we'll see if there's a late penalty. Eight of six yards on the play. And towards the end, Robert Way, number 11, he comes over, let's see. Is he out of bounds, he's out of bounds. A little push, I thought it was a forearm shiver, it was a push. I can respect the no call. Robert Way has been very active so far this afternoon. Bell looking to throw again. As his tight end scrubs into Wildcats territory, but short of the first down. And they want to throw the football. This is the team that wants to throw the football. They see an opportunity to throw it. The offensive coordinator is T.C. Taylor. He said we can throw the football. Let's come out throwing it. These different formations. Erdin short, first down yardage achieved. That's Augustus. Andreas Augustus. Been playing college football for a long time. Started off at Prairie View A&M back with Henry Frazier. Then when Coach Frazier left Prairie View and came here to North Carolina Central, he came with them. Had a couple of injuries. And, 
and some confusion on that sequence. North Carolina Central will use its first time out. And Augustus is, is hobbling pretty bad, as if he had to take a knee, limping. We'll keep it right here. Augustus helped off the field. And Jay, while we have a moment, how about give me five if you don't mind? A lot of things taking place in the HBCU world. We got a number of new head coaches, first year coaches. So on the bubble, I put Brian Jenkins from Alabama State, was at Bethune Cookman, went to Alabama State. He's not a first year coach, so he's on the bubble. Now, I wouldn't number the rest. We're going alphabetical order, so just to make it clear, <laughs> Alex Wood, the new head coach at Florida AM. Terry Sims, new head coach at Bethune Cookman. Willie Simmons, new head coach at Prairie View AM. Play quarterback at? Clemson, you had to get it in there. <laughs> Latrell Scott, new coach at Norfolk State, and Kenny Carter, the new coach at Delaware State. So these are all notable coaches in their first year. Bench, I'm not saying who's gonna have the long longevity and everything. I wouldn't put a number on that. Always politically correct. I love it about you, Jay. Absolutely love it. Rain pouring down again here in Durham. Here's the pitch week to McLean, who has some running room crossing the 40. And a gain of six yards on first down. And, and, and you can't count on Mother Nature because coming out in the first half, it was a hey, throw the football. Now, during the timeout, run the football. Rain's coming down heavy. I will say this about your guy, Willie Simmons. I like his offensive mind. Prairie View a is scoring points this year. Certainly changing the mindset. Bell tried to call his own number. And tackled by the shoestrings by Robert Way. He'll lose yardage. You see the recognition. He saw the blitz coming from his left side, but after making one miss, not able to get away from Robert Way, who, as you've mentioned several times, having a pretty good ball game here today. Leading tackler for the Wildcat defense, a loss of four. Third down and long for Bell. Out of the shotgun with time going deep. Has a man wide open, and it's caught. Bringing it in is Brandon Galloway. Borgella in coverage, but a nice pitch and catch and a gain of 30 yards. They've been trying to attack the middle of the field, finally able to convert. Ball's a little bit high, but how does he get so open in the middle of the field? That's just poor coverage by the secondary, and the Eagles finally able to take advantage. From the 12-yard line, handoff McLean. Stuttered steps his way across the 10 down to the 9. So the Eagles in business, red hot to open this third quarter and in search of their first lead in the ball game. They're already in field goal range, but, but this is where it gets tough for them. We know they want to throw the football. They don't have the ability to blow Bethune-Cookman off the line of scrimmage. We've seen them with the ball here before. How are they going to get the ball into the end zone? Second down and seven to Clay. Looking for daylight, find some, down to the five. We'll give him the four yard line, it'll bring up third down and short. A tackle made by Way. Well, McLean in for the injured Idrius Augustus. And now they'll bring in the third team back, Ramon Simpson. A big play here, Jay. Bell, quarterback keeper, touchdown Eagles. Jamal Thomas missed an opportunity, and Bell made him pay in the first lead of the game for North Carolina Central. Spread him out. Linebackers over pursue. You saw number 42, Trenton Bridges, lose sight of the quarterback, allowing Bell to use his athleticism to get into the end zone. And now they'll go for two, a little trickeration, handoff. And nothing doing, Bethune-Cookman up to the challenge. So they go for two, unable to convert. And with 11-19 remaining in our third quarter, our new score, the Eagles lead it 12-7 here in rainy Durham. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
and Wall Clippers and Trimmers. Real guys, real grooming. Visit wallrealguys.com. NC Central in search of its first victory against Bethune Cookman since back in 1994. And their first lead of the ball game, call it 12 to 7 back in Durham. With Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. It's a nine play, 58 yard drive in just over three minutes. And the rain lightening up momentarily. Boy, it's been hit and miss the entire game. Ball fell off the tee with the wind blowing, gusting as high as 25 miles an hour today. Brandon McLaren set to kick this one off. Have the wind at his back. And hammers this one deep into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats from their own 25. Well, that last touchdown run, Malcolm Bell made him pay, Jay. To take a look at number 42, Trenton Bridges. His responsibility is keep the quarterback in your line of vision at all times. Two steps, he loses the quarterback. By the time he recognizes where the quarterback is, Bell's already made a beeline to the end zone. When you play contained defense and you have three linebackers, you cannot over-pursue. Over-pursue cost him, and that gave North Carolina Central their first lead over Bethune-Cookman in probably years. And Bethune-Cookman 5-1 and one against the Eagles, going back to that 1994 tilt. Larry Brim back on the field, the backup quarterback. Operating out of the pistol, handoff to Anthony Jordan. No, will keep it. Near side, Brown, the more athletic signal caller, dances out of bounds after a short pickup. And this is what I think we're going to see more of in the second half. You know, they're going to go with Brim, who's the better runner. You know, with the conditions, they don't care about the conditions as much with Brim in the game. He can hurt you with his legs a little bit more than Quentin Williams. So right now, Bethune Cookman coming out, going with the double tight end formation, trying to play smash mouth football versus North Carolina Central. Second down and eight. This time Jordan gets it. Stood up in the line. That's C.J. Moore who drags him backwards. And the Eagles all of a sudden with Uncle Mo on their side. A couple of scores from around the MEAC. A&T, Tariq Cohen up for the Peyton Award. Quality win versus Hampton. On well, the one I know that uh, Mr. Kidding. Walker doesn't like. That's a bitter pill right there on homecoming. We don't lose homecoming. You've got to be kidding me. They were winning that game all. I got to figure out what happened there. Come on, Bison. Still a pretty good win for one of your coaches you've been watching up in Norfolk. Yeah, the trail squad. Back to back wins. North Carolina, uh, Norfolk State. They beat Hampton and they beat Howard. Big play coming up for the Wildcats. Brim with time looking deep into double coverage and it's going to be picked off. And who else? C.J. Moore. Second interception of the game. And that's a poor decision. When you're going to bring Brim in the game, you're going to lose something in the passing game. C.J. Moore saw this ball all the way. He's looking directly in the backfield. Left side of your screen, 32. You see the helmet there? He's just looking. He's looking. He's looking. Nothing takes him away from the wide receiver. All he has to do is go up and get it at its highest point. Larry Brim determined where he was going with that football, regardless of the coverage. And C.J. Moore made him pay. First and 10 for the Eagles. Bell back on the field, joined by Darrell McLean in the backfield. North Carolina Central with all the momentum in the world. Handoff McLean, a short pickup. Pushes the pile, including DeMarcus Womack ahead for about four-yard gain. Well, Jay, you got about nine and a half minutes left with the wind at your back. We'll see how aggressive the play calling will be here for Malcolm Bell. When, when they had success and move the ball before, they were throwing the football. So I think you're going to see more of them throwing the football right now with the rain dying and realize if they get a, a field goal, it really puts them in the driver's seat. Screen pass, Levante Smith off to the races. And inside Wildcats territory, gain of 16 yards, shoved out of bounds by Richardson. And continuing to throw the football. They like the look that they're getting right now, so they're keeping the formation here. And what this does, it really neutralizes them. Bethune has to show their hands. You're either going to let us throw it or you're going to let us run. Here's Wilkes. And 
and lasso down by Arthur Williams. So they're trying to attack the edge of this Bethune-Cookman defense with these quick passes. Yeah, when they go with that two-by-two two formation, you know, it forces Bethune to really show what they're going to do defensively. So right now they've got three receivers on the bottom half of the screen, one on top. How's Bethune going to play it? So they're going with seven man in the box, meaning they're going to throw the football. If you're North Carolina Central, you throw it here. Double move, and a pass is caught inside the 20. And tiptoeing out of bounds, it'll be first and goal for the Eagles. Deontay Wright with the reception, his first of the ball game and a gain of 33. And it all started with the formation and the number count. Seven people close to the line of scrimmage. We've got trip formation to the right, double move. Able to find somebody in the secondary for the big play. And this is a great job schematically of getting Deontay right open. He's just going to kind of slip to the outside, stalk like he's going to block. Arthur Williams, number 25, gives him a clean release. Malcolm Bell puts it in the sweet spot. Elliot Miller, the injured Wildcat defensive back, being tended to near the goal line. Certainly don't want to speculate. Miller, one of those guys, he's a special talent, actually, just a true freshman, but earned a starting spot. They say he plays special, he plays like a veteran. Jay, we mentioned this, just one win for the Eagles against Bethune-Cookman back in 1994. Are you surprised with what we're seeing here so far? Saw it coming, so to speak. I mean, keep in mind, this North Carolina Central ball squad won four of their last conference games last year. So they got on fire. They started to believe in themselves. And once they overcame some of the early physical nature of Bethune-Cookman, I think they absorbed the blow. Then they said, well, now it's our turn. And what we're seeing right now is them putting the pressure on Bethune-Cookman. And how will Bethune-Cookman react in these type of situations? And, and one thing you always know about football, and I think this is why Coach Jerry Mack is so excited, and everybody here is excited about him in this area, is when you can throw the football, you can play with anybody on any given week. You can be down by two or three touchdowns and come back, and you can really put the pressure on. And when you watch tape of them, playing in their previous games they did a good job of moving the football schematically and I think the talent level needs to improve a little bit but I think from an organizational standpoint they're not getting out coached by anybody with their passing game Jerry Mack in his second season with the Eagles loves to throw that football though he does he'll fall in love with it he needs to work on some run game stuff but in terms of throwing it one of the better offensive minds in the passing game playing to the backfield on first and goal he'll get the call the spin move, and inside the five-yard line, a quality pickup on first down. Now, this is gut check time for Bethune Cook. If you're on the road, it's conference game. You're down by five. If you hold them to a field goal, it becomes eight. You can get that back with a touchdown and two-point conversion. In this type of weather, if they score a touchdown right now, really putting your offense behind the eight ball. Going with the up-tempo offense, McLean gets to the edge of the touchdown. His second of the season, and the Eagles creating separation in our third quarter. Zone read. Two defenders go inside. Donald Smith, number 16, went in with the defensive end. Jamal Thomas, that's an easy score for North Carolina Central. Kali on for the extra point after the failed two-point play after the last score. And the kick is good. And our new score with 7.51 remaining in the third quarter. North Carolina Central extends its lead to 12. Morel McLean with the honors. Richard Sherman. Richard, you got to give me a splinter. I'm now a little voice in my stomach. We need protein. And I'm not talking about Jack Lynx. I want all natural Alberto beef jerky. You sure do no jerky, a little voice in my stomach. You got that right. Do you ever just take a nap? Alberto beef jerky. 
you get out what you put in. AT&T presents the strongest of the strong. Okay, guys, let's see who can write the strongest tweet to show your school. North Carolina Central and their MEAC opener. Looking to improve to 1-0 in the young season in conference play. Darrell McClain with a touchdown moments ago. And Jay Walker, Roy Philpott back here in Durham. Marching Wildcats made the trek up. We're going to need to jumpstart this Bethune offense. Right now, things are starting to turn for the worse here for Bethune Cookman. It's amazing, too, that Bethune Cookman grabbed the early momentum, had the interception. Quick touchdown by Anthony Jordan, and since then, it's been all Eagles. And a reminder, Sunday from 8 a.m. to noon, ESPNU is going to bring you College Football Sunday. From Heisman hopefuls to championship contenders, College Football Sunday is the only show that ranks them all exclusively on ESPNU and watch ESPN. And the new Wildcats quarterback, they'll turn back towards their starter, Jay and Quentin Williams. I think they need to throw the football a little bit more. They gave Brim an opportunity to throw it. He threw an interception, which was a no-brainer. Now, they're going back to Quentin Williams. Terry Sims rolling the dice here off of play action. Williams with time, and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Antonio Brown, who else? Second sack of the afternoon. And I don't know if you get into full throw the football mode here. I still think you have to just score points. You have to keep up with Central. And just move the ball. I still like to see him utilize Anthony Jordan. Michael Jones checks in the backfield for the Wildcats. And a miscommunication that time between quarterback and receiver. The first time Davis has been targeted. And a late flag on the field. Marcus Johnson, perhaps the guilty party. A miscommunication between the wide receiver and the quarterback, but they're probably going to call the penalty on illegal contact downfield. So, Jay, instead of third and 13, that'll result in a first down. There's no foul for unsportsmanlike conduct. But Marcus okay. Woods tells us otherwise. No foul. One more look at that last sequence. Uncatchable ball, but I mean, still, you know, pushed him downfield. Quarter's been dominated by the Eagles. Williams on the quarterback keeper. Nowhere close to first down yardage. A conservative play call as he gets back to the 28 yard line. Jordan Miles finally brought him down, but the punt team back on the field for the Wildcats. Just impressed with the job that North Carolina Central has done. Not a big unit, but tough and gritty. Defense that gives up 31 points a game has held Bethune Cookman to seven. Cagle back in to punt this one away for the Wildcats. High snap, but he corrals it. And a wobbly punt. Fair caught at the 41, so good field position for North Carolina Central. And coming up Wednesday at 7 p.m., it's women's college volleyball on ESPNU as number two Texas takes on Baylor, followed by Tennessee against LSU at 9, exclusively on ESPNU and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Under seven to play in our third quarter. 15 plays run by the Eagles in this second half so far, Jay. Just five for Bethune-Cookman. Two quick touchdowns, and Uncle Mo on the side of North Carolina Central right now. And a huge opportunity for North Carolina Central to really put this game away with any type of points they can gather right now. This could send a statement to Bethune-Cookman. Bethune's in unfamiliar territory. They're down by 12 points on the road to a team that they've just owned. I think this is not only a message to, to Bethune Cookman, but for the rest of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, North Carolina Central was no fluke last year. Second and short, slant pattern, Wilkes. Short arm, the attempted reception. Well, you mentioned, I mean, both of these teams tied for first place in the MEAC a season ago at six and two in the league. 
expectations very high for both programs. And if Central can get better play from Malcolm Bell, I mean, you just had a good look at him. That was a slant pattern that should have been completed for a first down to keep the pressure on Bethune Cookman. If he can improve his accuracy from a quarterback position, this is a very tough team. A dump off pass with running room. There's Simpson. Avoids a tackle. Still on his feet and chugs his way across the 30. And a late penalty flag on the field as well. Gain of 23 yards. How about that catch and run? This is what I mean by Jerry Mack, the offensive mind, is going to figure out a way to schematically give you a hard time. Just a simple dump pass, but he saw something. And it was enough for the first down. It just comes down to what's the penalty. Now Bethune-Cookman in desperate need of a stop of some kind. Jerry Mack has his team rolling right now. And a lot of meetings on the field today by this officiating crew. And the flag came in at the end. So if it's a spot penalty, even if it's a hold downfield, 10 yards should still be a first down. After the play, personal foul, offense number 11, 15-yard penalty, still will result in a first down. It's a senior tight end, Nathan Scruggs. This is just a quick quick screen, wide receiver screen with the lineman getting out there, Desmond Cooper, number 71, and the rest is all Ramon Simpson. Let's see, they called it a, oh, wow. <laughs> They've been calling it. If you hit late, they called it, but you saw it there at the end, it was Nathan Scruggs on Kevin Thompson away from the ball. Still good enough for the first down. Simpson to carry and tackle behind the line of scrimmage driven backwards. Jamal Thomas with a stop. It just seems like with that penalty called and you don't get the big gain and you come out on first down and lose yards, a little bit of momentum taken off with that penalty. Also two yards on the play. Simpson stays in at running back. No flank Bell in the shotgun. Quarterback keeper Malcolm Bell crosses the 40. And another flag on the field comes in late. Finally brought down by Todney Evans. And this has become a broken record of sorts here in our third quarter. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 55. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Evans with the stop and the personal foul penalty. Terry Sims has certainly seen better days than this one. His team off to a three and one start. Jay, you get the sense that somebody on this Wildcats defense has to make a play right here and right now. And that's what's been missing. They haven't come up with the big play yet in this half. They did it in the first half. That sparked the offense. That's how they scored the touchdown. But who's going to do it now? Simpson, the cut, the play. There he goes. Inside the five, it'll be first and goal for North Carolina Central. Nothing fancy. They like to run outside, but Simpson finds a running lane. It comes a foot race to the end zone. And right now, the mental toughness of Bethune Cookman is being challenged. And they don't seem to be rising to the occasion as Central is starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Bully is being bullied after a gain of 19. Simpson stays in the backfield. Ramon Simpson straight ahead. Close to the goal line, he'll come up a yard short. After trailing seven to nothing early, the Eagles have run off 19 straight points and looking for more. Bell. Far side, touchdown, North Carolina Central. And a second of the ball game for Malcolm Bell. This one from two yards out, and it has been all Eagles in this third quarter. Called his own number, just looked for a hole. Gave the fake, went to the outside. Great block by Smith on the outside to secure the edge. And North Carolina Central 
big lead over Bethune Cookman. Nigel McCauley back on for the PAT. Kick is up, and it is good. Our new score with 3.36 remaining in the third quarter. The Eagles lead it 26-7. For the student athletes of the Mid-Eastern Athletes. 26 straight on the board for North Carolina Central. Back here in Durham, college football presented by McDonald's. Former Howard and NFL quarterback Jay Walker, Roy Philpott here with you. A sudden turn of momentum. Here in our third quarter, all in favor of NC Central. It's been a very impressive showing today, Jay. It has been. They took the punt from Bethune Cookman, and now they're starting to deliver the blows. Now, for one of the few times in recent memory, Bethune Cookman has to show the ability to fight back. Should be pointed out as well, the Wildcats did rally in a road win at Grambling, scoring 29 points in the fourth quarter, so certainly they've shown signs of being explosive. We'll see what happens here. Don't forget Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, the 2015 Geico High School Football Showcase is on ESPNU as Bergen Catholic takes on DePaul Catholic exclusively on ESPNU and streaming live on Watch ESPN. What needs to happen right now for Bethune-Cookman to put points on the board? I think they need to figure out what they want to do offensively in terms of quarterback. Do you want to go with Williams, when you know you're going to throw a little bit more, maybe can run your overall package more. Do you want to go with Brim that will have the opportunity to break a long run for you? I do like the fact that they have Jordan back in the game. I still think, so I would say give Anthony Jordan some carries. Off of play action. Flag is thrown to the area of holding, and the pass is out of bounds looking for Jawill Davis, who has been quiet. Really everything going wrong right now for this Wildcats offense. Holding offense, number 69, 10-yard penalty, first down. Wayne Montgomery has already earned his degree, a transfer from Western Kentucky, the guilty party. You see 69 in white. Now 15 of the 16 touchdown drives scored this year by Bethune Cookman took three minutes or less, or less rather. They called the quick strike attack. They need some of that right now. And Williams scoots ahead for a short pickup. And their best offensive weapon is Anthony Jordan. You need to start utilizing Anthony Jordan. I don't want to see Jordan, you know, doing a lot of blocking. You need to find ways to get him the football and let him create. I mean, he's the one playmaker you've had in this game thus far. Jordan had the lone touchdown to the game for the Wildcats back in the first half. With three to play in our third quarter on second and long. Williams with time and some daylight. He'll get that penalty yardage back. It'll bring a third down and 10. And I don't think Quentin Williams recognizes what North Carolina Central is doing to him defensively. He's leaving the pocket early. He's scrambling. And he's just running around. I don't know if he's trying to read their defense. Maybe he's rattled with the defensive pressure that's coming. But it doesn't seem like he's settling in the pocket going through his progressions. And another big play coming up for the Wildcats. Jordan in the backfield. And Williams out of the shotgun, looking at the same, and he's got his man. It's caught. Jaquan Loomis with the reception. Brought down by C.J. Moore, but most importantly, a first down, Jay. And this was a good job. Look at Williams as he gets settled in the pocket. One of the few times he's going through his reads. He's taking a look. Okay, my tight end's there. Settles in the pocket. Throws it to the weak spot of the defense for the completion. That's what they want him in the game doing. They don't necessarily want him running around. They'd like to have him settled in the pocket. Call it a gain of 21. Impressive pitch and catch by Quentin Williams right into the wind. The pump fake. And shovels it across to Jordan, who's tackled quickly by Theo Livingston. 
And a short pickup on first down. And now it's nice quarterback by Quinn Williams. They tried to go for the double move. It wasn't there. Simple check down, just picking up any type of positive yardage on first down will do in that situation. Eagles defensively in a 4-2-5 base. Starting this game out in the nickel package. It has created confusion for Bethune Cookman. Williams again with time, heaves it downfield. It's incomplete, looking for Davis. Tony Tate in coverage. And it's been the, a certain look that's really given Bethune Cookman trouble. What you'll see from North Carolina Central, they'll have four defensive backs, the two corners and the safety, all lined up at the same depth. And then they'll choose at the last minute who they're going to roll up. See, so all of them are back around the 40-yard line. Now, where's the soft spot? So now you're starting to see the bottom of your screen is starting to show a little bit that they're coming up this way, but it seems like soft coverage, and it's not. Now, catch need a play here on third down. Down the field, and it's caught. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow. Deshaun Nelson the grab and a big time collision CJ Moore who also has two interceptions today. Moore coming off the hash. This ball hangs in the air a little bit. And he makes a beeline. Good job holding on to the ball by yeah, Nelson. That's a gain of 23 yards. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Low snap handled by Williams towards the end zone as a man breaking open touchdown. And Jawill Davis from 29 yards out and the Wildcats right back in it. North Carolina Central got impatient and brought pressure. Great job picking up the blitz by the running back Jordan and the offensive line. Nobody in the middle of the field. Jawill Davis, we talked about his ability to be a home run hitter. Able to easily get beyond the secondary for the score. Hernandez on for the extra point. And our new score with 51.7 seconds remaining in the third quarter, 26 to 14. It was a seven play, 75 yard drive in under three minutes. And watch the blitz come from your right side. Watch Jordan step up. Get the block right there. They also pass it off with number 57, Trevin Huff. Nice pocket, no safety in the middle of the field. C.J. Moore comes over late. And that's great offensive football. Good job picking up the blitz. Great recognition by Quentin Williams. And an easy touchdown reception for Jawil Davis. And Davis needs some more touches. He's the leading wide receiver coming into this game with 15 grabs this year. We'll see if that's the spark Bethune Cookman's been searching yep. for. Yep, but they're searching for it. You see right there, Williams is trying to inspire the offensive line. If you all give me some more time and allow me the flexibility to read coverages, we can do some things in the secondary. We talked early in the first half. This is a North Carolina Central defense that puts a lot of stress on their secondary, relying on them to cover so long one-on-one, -on -one, so much one-on-one. -on -one, you can hit them with big plays. Really the first substantial drive of the game by Bethune Cookman. And the Wildcats now with some hope. Knocking on the door of the fourth quarter here. And Hernandez into the teeth of that win. Fielded at the 10. Good field position for the Eagles. First and 10 from their own 33. Cats known for their defense over the years. The physical play of this unit certainly has been tested today, and now an important drive coming up for the Eagles as well. Momentum teetering between both squads, and Terry Sims likes what he saw in that last possession. And the band's starting to get into it. Not so fast. North Carolina Central may need to put some more points on the board if you want to hold on for a victory. <laughs> Malcolm Bell back on the field. Two rushing touchdowns today. That pass batted down at the line. Donald Smith blitzing in from his linebacker spot. 
knowing they want to throw the football. They've had success with those wide receiver screens and slip screens. Good job by Donald Smith. Second down and 10. Bell back in the shotgun. Augustus has been injured, so it's been McLean who gets the call here. Far side with daylight. Into Wildcats territory, forced out of bounds, all the way down at the 40-yard line. And this is a mistake just by formation. Donald Smith made a great play on the previous play. When they shift formation, look at Smith in the middle of the screen, your top. Who's responsible for the top side of the field? He comes up and in. They get a hand on him, taken off to the outside. Nobody stressing the outside contain. That's a mental error. Gain of 27 yards. Darrell McLean now over the century mark. And time running down here at the end of the third quarter. They're going to take this lead in a, to the fourth quarter. Started out as a defensive slugfest. The fireworks have been fired here in our third period. And an exciting fourth quarter coming up moments from now. 26 to 14 our score the Eagles taking advantage here at home in Durham we'll see if Bethune Cookman can respond coming up next Going out to that break, delay of game was called. They're going to put 1.5 seconds back on the clock. An opportunity for one more play to be run here. And you lose five yards. So they ended up calling the penalty delay of game because the timing wasn't there in sync. Bell with time, looking in the seam, and it's going to be picked off. Tyree Simmons comes in at the last second. And talk about a turn of events at the end of the third quarter. Fourth quarter coming up next. It'll be first and ten for the Wildcats, and don't you go anywhere. Whether you're pushing paper or pushing cattle, every guy gets ready to face the day. You need the right tools, the right gear, quality matters. I get ready with a wall clipper. This thing's heavy duty, American made. And better blades mean a better haircut. You gotta shine up like a pretty penny sometimes, but that doesn't mean. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's and in part by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Start of the fourth quarter. Jerry Mack offering an earful to field judge Cameron Thompson, also Marcus Woods. After a strange sequence there at the end of the third quarter, Jay Walker, Roy Philpott back with you. Jay, we were commenting during the break. I'm not sure I've ever seen that called. And then it leads to an interception. And Quinn Williams, who has the hot hand back on the field. And a big time pickup on first down, and there he goes, near side, jumped out of bounds. And into Eagles territory after a gain of 33. Williams no more for his arm than his legs, but good vision here and good athleticism. In the open space, has the ball secure. Nice move to get to the outside, picks up more yardage. And we saw after that last touchdown drive, the intensity of Quentin Williams. Really wants to win this game, and he's trying to put this offense on his shoulders. On first down from the 42, Williams with all kinds of time. Now pressured, pass is caught. Frank Brown makes the grab, and another first down for the Wildcats. And now he's starting to pick apart this defense. When Central likes to disguise their coverages, they do one thing. They're either going to play man coverage, or they're going to leave the middle field wide open. One way or the other, crossing routes kill them. So you can either get a crossing route with the band coverage or somebody crossing in that second level in the middle of the field that's been open. Williams has completed five of his last six passes for close to 100 yards. Play action here towards the end zone. Running wide open is Davis. 
Touchdown, Wildcats. From 29 yards out, and he burns a Marcus Johnson, his second catch, and his second time reaching pay dirt. If you give him the time, he was telling his offensive line, I can pick them apart. All these fancy uh, disguising coverages they're trying to do, give me enough time to allow my receivers to get downfield, and the Wildcats have come storming back. After, I shouldn't say storming. No. <laughs> <laughs> After the interception, it takes Less than a minute for the Wildcats to reach the end zone again. Extra point is up. It is good. And just like that, Bethune-Cookman trailing by just five. Our new score, 26-21 to 21 here in Durham. Oh, buddy. Back in Durham, fourth quarter continues in what has been a wild second half. Back in Durham, fourth quarter continues in what has been a wild second half. Bethune Cookman right back in it. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. You see the numbers for Darrell McLean and also Quentin Williams. Williams just looked like a different signal caller here in these last two quarters. He's found his confidence. I think the line believes if we block, we can pick them apart. So this is a completely different offense than we saw in the first half of Bethune Cookman. And for North Carolina Central, they found some running game, a team that likes to throw the football. How soon do you start nursing the lead, trying to deflate it? I don't think you can. I think right now you have to say, this has become a shootout. We're going to have to score points, and the best offense may win this game. And Terry Sims has got to be very pleased with this quick turnaround. Still plenty of work to do. 14-plus minutes remaining. Now trailing by five. It was 19 just moments ago. Hernandez with a hand at his back. Brought back to the 19-yard line. That was McLean. You want to talk about a momentum swing. The delay of game extends the third quarter before the interception. At some point, you have to realize the clocks are not in sync. And then on the next play, after the five-yard penalty, throws an interception. And then Quentin Williams decides he's going to make another impact to keep it going. The long run. And then after that, a beautiful touchdown pass to pull the Wildcats to within five. Will Davis, two catches, 58 yards, two touchdowns. And now Jerry Mack in search of answers here. His team still does have a five-point advantage, it should be noted. But they're forced to continue to play aggressive. And off to Simpson. That goes nowhere. And you can see the spring of the step of this Wildcats defense. They've got a chance right now. And still... The formations are really making Bethune-Cookman show their hand. That last one, it was a situation where you throw the ball, Central elected to pass. See, this right here says you're going to throw the ball. Seven people by the line of scrimmage. Eagles going into the wind. Standing defense, Smith is able to bat it away. Third down and long coming up. What's the score? Because all of a sudden, that's becoming very important right now. One team feels like they're in the groove. Another team felt like they were so close to sealing this game in the third quarter. A lot of football remains to be played, and both teams need somebody to step up and make a big play. Simpson, the third team running back, remains on the field. Augustus has been injured in the second half. They'll set up the bubble screen. Levante Smith goes nowhere, a gain of two on third and long in the punt team, getting set to check back on the field for the Eagles. And Bethune-Cookman starting to fly around again. They lost it for a little while. They were confused, didn't know what hit them. Now all of a sudden, I call it the stormtroopers when they come out in all white like that. They look like the stormtroopers. Now the stormtroopers are starting to fly around the football and, and realize, oh yeah, North Carolina Central, we remember you. And a very different vibe emanating from the, the uh, Bethune-Cookman sideline. Tilkey back on to boot this one away. And an end over end punt will be downed at the 48 yard line. Punt of 31 yards and a quick reminder Sunday from 8 a.m. to noon. ESPNU brings you College Football Sunday from Heisman hopefuls to championship contenders. College Football Sunday is the only show that ranks them all exclusively on ESPNU and watch ESPN.
in the blink of an eye, this game has turned. Bethune Cookman with all the momentum it could possibly want after trailing by 19 points just four minutes ago. And they're back at it now for North Carolina Central, particularly on defense. Do you play vanilla coverage? They don't do vanilla too well. They like to disguise and gimmick. Williams has had the hot hand, joined in the backfield by Jones. You know, when they give you this coverage, I think you, you attack the underneath stuff right now. Be patient and attack them underneath and in the middle. With time, calls his own number, and there he goes. Quentin Williams dives ahead down to the 35-yard line. A gain of 14 and a first down. And you see the poise of Williams starting to show. In the first half, he looked a little rattled, looked confused, maybe did not understand the coverage scheme that he was being faced with. But now, it seems like the game has slowed down. He's in complete control. And a 4-2-5 riddle being solved right now by three and white. With time down the field and caught Frank Brown. Dances his way down to the 20-yard line. Game tackled with Moore leading the charge. But another first down for the Wildcats after a gain of 16. I love the play call. They figured it out. They say whether they play man coverage or they go to the zone, whenever they play zone, it's always a cover two with the middle of the field open. Second time we've seen it this half where Frank Brown has run that second level crossing pattern in the soft spot of the defense. Here goes Williams again with a blocker. And brought down after a four yard pickup. Jordan Miles with the stop. And you can just see it in his eyes and the confidence in the throwing motion. It is all there for Quentin Williams. He's seeing things well. Remember earlier I said I don't know if he was seeing things well. He's seeing this defense well. And once again, see C.J. Moore is a guy middle of the screen. When he comes down, he leaves the middle of the field wide open. Williams with time this time in the flats. Deshaun Nelson with a grab and another first down. It'll be first in goal after the stop made by Jeremy Thompson. He's picking him apart. You can tell he's picking him apart. That was probably the quickest release we've seen from him all day. That means he saw what he wanted. Soft spot, soft coverage outside. Get rid of the ball quickly. Allow the receiver to make the catch and pick up the first down. Wildcats will take tempo against the Eagles again. Jones. And this time stacked up. A short pickup. So one of the few times in this fourth quarter we've seen a non-chunk play for Bethune Cookman. And I would continue to spread them out. And if you find something with your pre-snap read, take it. Otherwise, allow Quinn Williams to run the football. He's found a comfort zone running the football. They don't have Anthony Jordan, the power back in the game. I think you're playing in the North Carolina Central's hand right now at this point of the field, unless you're going to throw it. Williams is a redshirt senior out of Tampa. Hand off Jones, touchdown, and the Wildcats back out in front. Third touchdown of the season for the junior, Michael D. Jones. And how about this comeback for the Wildcats? It's been impressive. They figured out how to win in the trenches and caught North Carolina Central gambling a couple times. I'm, I'm confused why he wouldn't go for two in this situation. High snap. And the extra point by Hernandez is good. 10.50 remaining, 28 to 26. Bethune Cookman back out in front. Fourth quarter action continues, 10.50 remaining. 28 to 26, our new score, Jay Walker, Roy Philpott. And the Speedway offense certainly in effect here for Bethune Cookman. All four touchdown drives today, taking three minutes or less, pretty much matching their production through the first four games of the season. Very impressive. They, they woke up, you know, but I think the emotion got them. I still have to question why they don't go for two-point conversion in that situation. A two-point lead is nothing. Three-point lead, you can rest assured and say a touchdown has to beat you. Only up by two, a field goal can still beat you. Hernandez kickoff, fielded by McLean as he crosses the 20. It'll be first and 10 for the Eagles there. Going well, just over five minutes. Bethune Cookman has put three touchdowns on the scoreboard. Trailing by 19 moments ago, it's now a two point lead. Well, the good thing for North Carolina Central, you get to do what you like to do best, which is throw the football. You know, and they can throw the football. Malcolm Bell 
wishes he had that interception back, which really, you know, put gasoline on the fire for that quick rally that Bethune Cookman had. He needs to forget about that, settle down, and come out throwing. Toss sweep, McLean. Yeah. Donald Smith with a tackle, a pickup of five yards. We haven't seen a lot of Malcolm Bell running with the football in the second half. It's been more through the air. Certainly the Eagles offense capable. And this is the formation they use, that two-by-two two formation, where they really force Bethune to show their hand. When you get the ball in this situation, they're going to run the football right now because of the number count. Hand off. McLean, the spin move. And up to the 38-yard line, good enough for the first down. Just take a look. I mean, they're counting numbers. You see five guys in the box, right? Everybody else is in the gray area. Don't worry about that. You have a running back in the backfield. Run the football. So it's this two-by-two -two formation, which is forcing Bethune-Cookman to show their hand, and that's where they've been able to run the football with success. Gain of 11 yards on the play. First and 10 for Malcolm Bell. The keeper near side and a shoestring stop. Trenton Bridges with a tackle. And that's the same play he missed earlier down in the goal line. Out of position, lost focus of where the quarterback was. This time, Bridges keeps Malcolm Bell in his sight, able to make the tackle. Under 10 minutes to play, our score at halftime was 7-6. to six. All of a sudden, the fun and gun is broken out here in Durham. And play action, they'll send it out in the flats. Oh, Simpson game tackled and pushed backwards. Donald Smith that time, the initial contact. Now, now this is Bethune Cookman. They, they are flying around. Look at the stormtroopers. They're coming. Make the catch in front of you. Lower the shoulder pad level. White jerseys all around. They're getting physical down there, Roy. Well, when 16 and 42 hit you basically at the same time, yeah. <laughs> you're going to feel that one later on. Terry Sims has got to be pleased with this turnaround. His defense standing tall. Can they again right here? Pitch and catch. Armani Lanier with the reception. But short of first down yardage. Forcing them to get rid of the football early. Don't get caught in the emotion. You must punt this football away and allow your special teams to do something if you're North Carolina Central. But we started to see flashes of that Bethune-Cookman defense, which was so feared throughout the conference. Athletes running all over the field with discipline. Hard hits. Nathaniel Tilke back on the field to punt this one away. Frank Brown back deep to receive. And a wobbler. Be down finally inside the 30 at the 29, a 27 yard punt. Well, Jay, you were reading my mind right there. The emotions of this game, Bethune Cookman with all of the momentum right now. You have to wonder if Jerry Mack was considering going for it on fourth down and obviously the right call to punt it away. Punt it away, didn't get the punt that he wanted, but he still forced Bethune Cookman to think about the battle of field position. And, and how impressive has this been for Bethune Cookman? I mean, they were done. Looked like they were done, they were out of it took advantage of the mistake and a good team makes you pay for your mistakes. Wildcats three and one in their first four games. North Carolina Central just one and two. And here goes Williams again. The senior quarterback with running room near side a flag on the field. Shoved out of bounds by C.J. Moore. We'll check the penalty. Are they going to call it on Dontavious Carter, the wide receiver for Holt. Holding offense, number four. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And that'll Ooh. wipe off a 47-yard pickup. It, 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 this is close. You know, when, I, when, I saw it, when I saw it in real time, I thought it was close. Left side of your screen. He's got it. That's he, a hold. He, he's got the jersey. And the, what do you do in that situation? You're blocking him, and the defensive back turns his back. I don't know if he turned him, but the defensive back turned his back and he was grabbing. Wipe off the big run by the quarterback. New line for North Carolina Central's defense. 
See the numbers on Williams. A completely different signal caller in this second half. And here's Anthony Jordan. Well, Jay, what a great time to give it to 6 2 220, the graduate from Atlanta, and let him ground and pound a little bit. Particularly when they're coming out with this formation where they're giving Central a dose of their own medicine. They're going with the two by two formation and having them declare it almost looks like a, a, a bunch formation on the bottom of your screen. They're just doing the number count right now. And if they can run the ball with an even number count, then Bethune Cookman's going to win that battle. Halfway through our fourth quarter, play action for Williams. Looking deep, near sideline, caught. J.C. Carter, it'll be first and goal for the Wildcats. Wide receivers run a little bit faster after they've been called for holding. And Quentin Williams is on fire. He's picking them apart. I mean, this is just, this is a quarterback. Settle in the pocket, look, throw it, lead him, hit him in stride. Wow. This, this is shades of Bethune-Cookman versus Grambling. And you talked about it earlier, that shootout they got involved in. They made this type of comeback again. Gain of 64 yards on the play, and here's Jordan. Brought down behind the line, that's Antonio Brown. They'll give him a gain, perhaps of a half yard. And it's a two-point game, so a touchdown versus a field goal here is absolutely critical. So trying to spread him out again with the formation. And contact was made, and that'll give Bethune-Cookman an extra five yards. They're about five yards. Halfway. Half the distance. Outside, defense number 46. Contact with the offense. Half the distance of the goal. Second down. Josh Wade crossed the line. But, but that's a big one though, because now the ball's going to around the three-yard line. And so you have the ball on the three-yard line. That's you know, that's your two-point conversion type plays there. So now that really says you can play physical football and force feed the run. 6.30 to play, a two-point lead for the Wildcats. Let's see if they use Jordan as a lead blocker and choose to run Williams. Well, they run the option, and Williams loses the football. And recovered wow. by the Eagles. What a miscue. Reggie Hunter comes out of there with it, the redshirt sophomore from Henderson, North Carolina. What a big play that was. Yeah, yeah, poor ball security. When you're going to run the option, you option off the end man to the line of scrimmage. Can't be indecisive. Give it to him. Thought about it. Good job of stuffing the pitch. Indecisive. Had he made the, the pitch or just held on to the ball and ate it, would have been okay. Instead, it's a turnover. And what a big play by North Carolina Central. New life for the Eagles. First and 10 now for North Carolina Central, and here comes Malcolm Bell. Preseason, first team, all MEAC performer. And I thought if you use Jordan as the lead blocker on that play, Williams can run it in. But you give him the option of doing a pitch and see what happens. Disaster. And here's a move by McClay. Gain of eight yards on first down. Finally stopped by Jason Smith. Under six to play. And it's turned out to be a very entertaining second half. It was seven to six at halftime. Bethune Cookman with the lead. And right now it's 28-26. We've taken a long time to get here. Bell. A nice move. And gets the first down. A little shake and bake that time, Jay. Uh, that was a great play by Malcolm Bell. They brought the blitz, and it was a run blitz. But he was able to outrun it. They accounted for everybody but the quarterback. See, white jerseys are there, but Malcolm Bell showing some athleticism. Able to pick up the first down. Drive continues from the 20. Bell fakes the pitch. Face mask. Face mask. That'll give him another 15 and another first down. Jamal Thomas brought him down with the front of the helmet. And it's turned out to be a very busy afternoon for Marcus Woods. And he'll have the call once again. Personal foul. 
face mask. Defense, number 58, 15 yards, added to the end of the play. First down. Everybody saw the face mask, obvious to see. It gets a hold of it and holds on, but not that they would have converted, right? No guarantee they would convert it, but how big is having that two-point lead compared to having a three-point lead right now? You mentioned it. Instead of going for two to give you the field goal advantage, they kick the extra point. Spin move, Simpson. Across the 45-yard line. And all of a sudden, after an 11-yard pickup, the Eagles in business, finally brought down by Johnson. I mean, are we watching a football game or what? They're, they're leaving it on the field. Fantastic job by Simpson. Great spin move, extra effort. These two teams are taking it to each other. And Bell dives straight ahead, a two-yard pickup. Smith in the area brings him down. And the good thing you can do with Bethune, if you keep them on the field for a while, you pick up one or two first downs, they start to look around and question each other. They're a great defense at three and out. But once you make them start thinking and communicating and hit them a couple times, they tend to get frustrated and pick up cheap penalties and blow coverages. Second down and eight. Simpson the deep handoff straight ahead. Game tackled. That'll bring up third down and four. If you're just joining us, Bethune-Cookman had an early 7-0 lead until 26 in a row were put on the scoreboard by North Carolina Central. Since then, it's been all Wildcats with 21 in a row of their own. The Eagles trying to mount another comeback, looking for their first win against Bethune-Cookman since way back in 1994. It's been a gang of a game of swings and shifts and changes and momentum and everything, but right now, both teams are leaving it all on the field. And a timeout called oh, by Jerry back like on the sideline. He saw something he didn't like. Yeah, but you have to understand the situation in the football game you're in. I mean, let's suppose you get the lead with the field goal, go up by one, and they kick another field goal. Timeouts are a premium to have in the second half of football games, particularly when you're trailing. Now let's take a look at tonight's Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's. After the timeout, a big third down coming up for the Eagles. It has been a great atmosphere here in Durham on a rain-soaked Saturday afternoon. Games all across the Deep South. Some situations being pushed up early to try to get the game in ahead of the weather. The weather certainly has impacted us here today with the rain and the wind. Just one timeout remaining. You have to believe the Eagles could be in four-down territory. Here we go on third down. Bell straight ahead with real estate and plows his way forward for the first down. Drayton finally brings him down all the way down at the 32. And here comes the tempo. Yeah, he's been a good runner all day, effective runner. Once again, Trenton Bridges, the inside linebacker, loses sight of the quarterback with the ball and allows Malcolm Bell to have a big game for the first down. I think they have to blitz him again. Although they missed earlier, if you're Bethune Cookman, I think you have to bring pressure and bring up a blitz. Ain't the box this time after the 14 yard pickup. Near side, flag on the field. Darrell well, McLean with the carry. And that could be a horse collar. By six point. Marquis Drayton. And instead, wow. it's going to be holding. Holding. Offense number 11. 10 yard penalty. Three at the top. Still first down. Nathan Scrubs, the tight end. Let's talk about effort. That play, with they got lucky. Now, number 16 in white on the right side of your screen, right? This is Donald Smith. They're dialing up a blitz. When you're blitzing outside, you go 100 miles an hour. Tell me, is this a 100 mile an hour effort? You're supposed to go, you're supposed to get it. He's absorbing the blow. Attack the hole. They're dialing up so you can attack a crease, get a tackle for loss, 
that wasn't that great an effort. It was a clean tackle attempt as well, not a horse collar. Here's the dump off. Smith bounces it outside and a late hit out of bounds. And there's the penalty flag. Daquan Richardson a bit too aggressive, and there's another flag. He stepped out of bounds, and he stepped out right there, and they called him for the hit there. You know, we, we talked about those penalties showing up for Bethune Cookman, and for years they've managed to overcome those penalties, but hitting somebody out of bounds. After the play, personal foul, defense number 38. 22, correction, number 22, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that look tells you the story there, the face of Terry Sims. He's going to call a timeout and try to regroup here. And, Jay, I kind of like this call because right now Uncle Mo clearly on the side of North Carolina Central. They, they did a good job, but... This is when you trust your defense. You have the penalty. You, you take the young man out. They got the penalty. Put somebody else in. You're going to be trailing if they kick a field goal. In close football games, you need those timeouts. You just never know what could happen. So for the momentum, yes, but you have to leave it on the field. They're going to make the play. You know, you have to trust that defense. And the defense has to know, hey, we may need all three of these timeouts if we have to drive a, a long ways in a short period of time. So I'm more in favor of give me those timeouts. I want to keep them. Remember, too, these two teams were part of five squads that tied for the MEAC championship last year. The importance of this game in terms of the Celebration Bowl is real. Oh, you're in the driver's seat right away. You get an opportunity to have somebody in your rear view mirror in front, instead of in front of you hoping that they lose. And I think what we've seen the past year has been controlling your own destiny. And the team that can control their own destiny for most of the season has got the best opportunity of making the historic Celebration Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia, which will be phenomenal. As we say in the HBCU world, all the coaches said this year, it's all about the celebration at the end of the year. After the Wildcats timeout, they have two remaining. First and 10 now for NC Central. On the zone read and tripped up is McLean. Eight of seven yards on first down, however, under three minutes to play. You have to take a chance here. If you're Bethune Cookman, you have to crowd the line of scrimmage, blitz some linebackers, try to create a turnover or a sack to make this a more difficult field goal attempt. Nigel McCauley has been perfect this year on his field goal tries. Here's Malcolm Bell. And tackled awkwardly from behind by Donald Smith. That'll bring up third down. And, and what a huge play by Smith going out of bounds. So right when you start to think about the clock, if you're Bethune Cookman, North Carolina Central helps you out and they go out of bounds, allowing you to save another timeout. I still think you have to sell out. If, if Central's going to score, let them score. You can get the ball back because your offense is on fire. I don't want this game to end with my offense, which has been on fire on the sideline. Play clock at 13 seconds and counting. I'd bring everybody. McLean to handoff, runs to daylight, first and goal for NC Central. It's a gain of six yards on third and one. And now decision time for Bethune Cookman. You, know, you have to stop the clock, but look at the safety high. Once you have that safety high stand on the five yard line, you're not selling out. I think this is a sellout situation. He's backing up. You need a run, stop, and blitz. If they picked up the first down, they're going to eat up a lot of clock. And that timeout you use to stop momentum is now gone. You caught it. Down, hand off. McClay dives forward. Now it's called timeout. You need to get a timeout here now. And with 90 seconds remaining, the clock continues to tick. Oh, wow. Well, I, I'm holding on to the ball then. I would force Bethune Cookman to call the timeout. Why would you let 40 seconds tick off the clock when the team is already in field goal position? You're basically guaranteeing you're going to get the ball back with less than a minute. Don't agree with the clock management. You can tell Central knows it. They're just taking their sweet time. 
Eight seconds left on the play clock, under a minute to play. Eagles trailing by two. McLean. And this time, nowhere to run. It'll bring up third down and goal. And you got to use a timeout right here. Yes. And with one remaining, 46 seconds left on the clock. Timeout on the field. We'll step aside with him. Don't go anywhere. Two point ball game. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. Six seconds remaining. Will Quinton Williams get one more opportunity after the fumble on the option play in a sequence that could have iced the ball game for Bethune Cookman? Wildcats lead it by two. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, third down and goal coming up for North Carolina Central. And it's still a sellout situation for Bethune Cookman. You come hard and heavy with the blitz, don't allow them to run the ball in, or if they run, it's going to be a loss. But man to man coverage. Force him to make a play. Eight in the box. Here's the handoff. McLean. Stop short of the goal line. Bethune Cookman with one timeout remaining. They'll use it right here. 36 and change left. And two more seconds escape the clock momentarily. One more look at that last yeah, that's play. That's a touchdown. That looks like six. That's a touchdown. And, and they should review this, and this should not be the timeout charge. And if you're Bethune Cookman, you want him to score in this one. Where's He's the not down. Please put 37 seconds back on the game clock. 37 seconds back on the game clock. I'm looking at the knees and knee, knees up. Oh, it has to be indisputable down. video evidence. I mean, he, half his body's in there. I, I think that's a touchdown, pretty clear. What do you, you say? You're better than me. Can you see the knees as the ball crosses the goal line? That's you'll, the question. Yeah, you'll see some angles, but it, it looks, I mean, it looked pretty clear like he was in the end zone. And, and I think if you're Bethune Cookman, you want him to score. Stop the clock. Okay, you need to go down and, and score a touchdown. Right there. He was, dra he was dragging down. His waist was going down. He was turned sideways. That's a touchdown. And I think that look right there, you can see they were underneath. He's turned sideways. He's going down. That's a, yeah, he's in the end zone. And I know there's some things that take the angle a little bit, but we've seen enough to say pretty clearly he was in. Did, no review. I, I wonder, did they review? Did they ask him review? I don't think they did, they asked for the review. And Jerry Mack is thinking the same thing that you are right now. He's going to use one of his timeouts. And he'll give the replay booth a little bit more time to take a look. Well, this would be an 18-yard field goal attempt for a kicker that's been perfect this season. It'll be a 30-second timeout. And, and, and I, Nigel McCauley. And I think if you're Mack... You want to score, you want the touchdown, give you a bigger lead, make the job harder. Anything can happen on special teams if you miss. Certainly. But I think he's wondering, did you all review that? It has been a very busy afternoon for our veteran officiating crew, led by Marcus Woods. Jay, it certainly felt like watching the replay that the ball crossed the plane before the knee was down. However, do you have the clear angle that shows it? At this point, I wonder, did they review it? And, and two, I thought there was enough there to say, I mean, he lands a half a body in the end zone. So, I mean, you don't see anything saying his knee is down. He's sideways. He's, he's in the end zone. Fourth down. His torso is, 
his buttocks are, are in the end zone, I mean. Fourth down and goal, and here comes the place kicker, Nigel McCauley. Two for two today, five for five on the season. From 18 yards. The kick is blocked, and it is no good. How do you like that? Elliot Miller got his fingertips on that field goal. What an unbelievable turn of events here in Durham. And now the bigger question is, yes or no, was that a touchdown on the previous play? Great effort coming around the edge. The freshman from Miami, Elliot Miller, has been close all day, and he finally gets one, and it just could be the game saver. He went all out and just got enough of that 18-yard field goal attempt to knock it away. How did they describe him as a special player? He plays like a veteran. And nothing more historic in this young freshman's career. True freshman from the bottom, Miami, Florida, keeps the Wildcats in first place in conference play unblemished. And North Carolina Central unable to stop the clock. One more look at that last play on third and goal. Oh, they're going to be talking about that for years. <laughs> they, they will. I, I thought it looked like a touchdown. Uh, but Zoom Cookman, I don't think, would have been upset if it were a touchdown at the time because they would have gotten the ball back with a little time. But so many things can happen when you leave it to one play on special teams. And what a great job by Elliott Miller with a huge field goal block. Elliott Miller saves the day. And our final score here in Durham, 28 to 26. Bethune Cookman improves to four and one. As we take a look now at our AT&T strong performance. Quinn Williams, who was he in the first half? I don't know, but in the second half, I will tell you, he was the best offensive weapon for the Wildcats. Calling his own number, getting it done on the ground as well as in the air. He found his touch. He made play after play. Quinn Williams, brought the Wildcats storming back in what I think is clearly a strong performance. Trailing by 19, they put three touchdowns on the board in just over five minutes of play, and Williams with close to 250 yards passing, 13 of 18 for the afternoon. Jay Walker, final thoughts here. Uh, they came in here and got a victory. No matter how they got it, going on the road in this conference is very tough to do. Now all eyes go to Daytona Beach when they will host South Carolina State on Thursday. That's going to be a barn burner. What a game it was. Our final score once again, Bethune-Cookman 28, North Carolina Central 26. Wildcats improve to 4-1. and one. The Eagles fall to 1-3. That'll do it for us. Good night from here in Durham, North Carolina.